Okay, between now and uh, um, six o'clock, we'll have our first open forum or until open forum is, is completed. Madam Clerk, do we have any cards? Thank you. Mr. Charles Bear. Welcome. Thank you, President Hall, council members, and my fellow citizens that are behind me. I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you tonight. I will join you all, as or some of you, as a colleague in a few months, and I appreciate the time and the sacrifices you make to serve. I appear before you tonight to discuss the Complete Streets uh, study that was recently done to reopen East Government Street uh, to 9th Avenue. I watched you all engage in more than a two-hour debate without a motion earlier this week, and I expected, as did many others, that the council would take some action. But you pushed it down the road another month. I couldn't talk to most of you about this because I fear it'll still be an issue when I get elect when I'm actually sworn into office, and that would violate the Sunshine Law, so I did not try to reach out to any of you. This issue surfaced several months ago, and the city recently spent about $18,000 to study this issue under a bigger title of Restoring the Grid and Complete Streets. West Florida Regional Planning Council employee Alan Gray was charged with holding a series of public meetings to discuss this issue. The meetings were advertised and flyers were distributed, more than 300 of them, to businesses and residences across that part of the city. Over the course of four workshops, Mr. Gray heard from citizens and established a task force, task forces, actually three of them, to take a deeper look at certain issues. Each of these task forces created a report which they thought was going to be inclu included in Gray's final report. They were not included, but you have them, I think they're coming to you on the desk, and you'll be on your desk in front of you, along with portions of Mr. Gray's report. If when you get it, you look at page 18 of Gray's report, you will see option three is to reopen East Government Street. However, if you look at page one, the first page of a two-page task force report, the citizens voted overwhelmingly 50 to 3 against this, against reopening East Government Street. For those who support reopening East Government Street, this is not good news. <coughs> However, when you ask citizens for their opinion and they give it to you, then you just can't shelve it in favor, in favor of the mayor's decision. None of the options presented in either Gray's report or the task force reports include one to send it back to the mayor, although that was discussed the other night. And some of you have even discussed the issue of doing a, a follow-up survey, which is mentioned on page 19 of Mr. Gray's report. And this was never discussed at any of the four workshop meetings and would be a waste of money. The citizens' message on this issue has been loud and clear. It's time for the council to act. I encourage you to present a motion in either old or new business tonight to accept this report and support option one, which directs the city to do nothing and to leave East Government Street as it is, not to reopen it to 9th Avenue or to Bayfront Parkway. There's been no clear and convincing evidence that opening East Government Street is going to do, uh, make a major impact on downtown or the historic district. And we need to focus our energy and our very, very limited dollars on pedestrian improvements in the historic district and on those needs identified by the citizens and the voters of this city. I thank you for your time and God bless you all and this city. Thank okay, thank you. Please don't leave yet. Ms. Okay. Myers? Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Bear, I want to thank you for coming down here and uh, voicing uh, your uh, concerns regarding this issue. Um, and I wholeheartedly agree with everything you've said. Uh, and I am going to bring this up under old business because we need to get back to where we first started, and that is the mayor's recommendation that came before the Committee of the Whole was to open Government Street. That should be the only issue we were considering, and it doesn't need to go back to the mayor. So I will be making a motion uh, that addresses the issue that should have been the only issue that we were considering, and the issue before us was whether or not to open Government Street or not. So uh, I intend to bring it up under uh, unfinished business, and uh, I want to thank you for, for bringing it up uh, you, to this council. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Deweese. 
Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you, Mr. Bear, for bringing this up. Um, you have a meticulous understanding of this issue, and um, I had a conversation today because I was quite frustrated that um, you know we were were listening for two hours and not taking action. It really was was to the point of ridiculous, but. Um, I was talking with someone is, that actually supports opening it up today, and I said, you know, there can be an argument made for both sides of this, but my point was that the conversation began very poorly with it just being taking action and not having that conversation with the stakeholders. Right. Um, so it's been a long process, and like you said, um, the citizens have spoken up, um, and you know, I, I wish it had gone better. Um, but. We have a residential area that has certain needs. We have a business area that has certain needs. Um, so I look forward to talking about this later on too, but thank you for bringing it up. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bear. Any more cards? Oh, Mr. Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Bear. Um, I appreciate certainly your representation of the process. I'm the first to admit that the introduction of the opening of 9th and Government Street to the public, most particularly to that neighborhood, <laughs> Um, achieve low grades, a low grade, no doubt at all. What I am seeking is fellow council members' support later on this evening in trying to disengage themselves from the flaws that accompany or characterize that introduction. I today, and I, I, I think fellow council members received correspondence from some other members in the community asking for us to, some were so bold as to say we want it open. Others, I think, simply sought our patience and requested that we more formally engage UWF in this discussion to at least determine what they may expect or envision in the future regarding this particular issue. Um, but I, I do appreciate the way that you're handling this, and um, hopefully we will um, most importantly respond to um, all of those affected citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Approval of minutes. Uh, Council, you've been provided uh, minutes of our uh, last City Council <coughs> meeting. Any um, corrections, additions, or deletions? Move the approval. Second. Motion and a second, please vote. Okay, and that passes unanimously. Um, all members are present except for Dr. P.C. Root. Words and presentations, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. Employee of the Month, in order to more strongly emphasize the city's commitment to outstanding performance, one employee is recognized as the Employee of the Month. Please recognize Laura Picklap, Administrative Officer 3, Financial Services, as Employee of the Month for August. Laura. The City of Pensacola is proud to recognize Laura as Employee of the Month for August. Laura began employment with the City of Pensacola in the Financial Services Department in September of 2005 and has continually demonstrated her dedication, professional work ethic, and pleasant attitude. She is a team player willing to assist coworkers and staff from other city departments with any accounting issues. She is always quick to thoroughly research any accounting-related topic and does not mind going the extra mile to ensure the task or projects is completed timely and correctly. It is not uncommon for her to be the last person on the sixth floor in the evenings, especially during the annual city audit. Recently, Laura was asked to perform all the daily accounting duties due to the short-term absence of the other two CPAs in the office. Laura has worked tirelessly to accomplish every task assigned to her while maintaining her positive, pleasant attitude and continuing to assist other city departments with excellent customer service. Because she is a true professional who exemplifies excellence in all that she does, we are proud to recognize her as the Employee of the Month for August.
Thanks, Laura. Each month we have employees who reach milestones in their career with the city. These milestones, which are observed at five years intervals, are symbols of commitment, hard work, and dedication in serving the people of Pensacola. Employees are the city's most important asset. As part of the city team, they individually and jointly seek ways to improve the quality and efficiency of services to every citizen. Tonight, we have the opportunity to publicly recognize and thank this special group of employees. As I call your names, would you please come forward and, and receive your pin? <coughs> At five years, Amanda Lowe, Public Safety Telecommunicator, two in the Police Department. Amanda was hired as a DCT student in records where she took every opportunity that presented itself to learn about the record keeping and the department before she was hired in dispatch. She's an extremely fast learner and has learned dispatching for both police and the fire department. She does an excellent job, is always willing to fill in whenever necessary, whenever necessary and is one employee that we can always count on. Zolly Linton, field service worker, Pensacola Energy. <laughs> Zolly is one of those unique employees who is highly productive with an infectious, positive attitude. He is assigned to warehouse equipment and grounds maintenance, but because of his varied skills and his willingness to take on any task for Pensacola Energy, he is often called upon for assignments outside of his regular duties. <coughs> It is not unusual to see him working in main construction, programming, automated meter <coughs> units, or delivering parts and equipments to the job site. He never seems to have a bad day, nor does he have a crossword for his coworkers. Pensacola Energy is simply a better place to work with him on the team. For 10 years, Melinda Crawford, airport director, Melinda started her career at the airport in 2002 as assist assistant airport director for finance. During the next seven years, she helped guide the airport through one of the most ambitious and challenging periods of construction in the airport's history. Throughout this period, Melinda effectively obtained, tracked, and managed a multitude of grants from both federal and state agencies. Through her efforts, her tenacity in seeking grants and obtaining reimbursements, and her attention to detail in the other day-to-day -day financial activity, she has played a major role in placing the Pensacola International Airport in a condition that's operationally and financially competitive with surrounding facilities. In May of 2009, she took over the position of airport director. She has continued to guide the airport through yet more development and has ensured that the Pensacola International Airport reflects that first class image desired by the citizens of this community. For 15 years, Kathy Mills, Crime Data Analyst 2, Police. <laughs> Kathy is extremely dedicated to her work as a crime data analyst. She always accepts tasks with a good attitude and not only has completed, completed requests for personnel within the department, but also for those in City Hall in addition to her daily duties of intelligence gathering, evaluation, and dissemination of information, not only for this, the department, but also for other local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Madam Clark, are there any public hearings? Yes. Item 6A is a public hearing to consider request to vacate right-of-way 610 South I Street. Okay. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and at this point, uh, Ms. Sherry Morris will conduct the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Thank you, Mr. Administrator, uh, Mr. Council President, members of council. Uh, the, request, <coughs> the request before you this evening is to vacate the eastern 20 feet of the I Street right of way, which is contiguous to 610 South I Street, which was formerly the Pensacola Wood Treating Property. Uh, they are making this request based on uh, some corrective actions that are required uh, by DEP uh, to address some contamination on, in this area of the right of way. Uh, the, um, the means to address this would be simplified if they own the, uh, the property versus it being city right of way. Um, we have reviewed the request. Your planning board unanimously recommended approval at their July meeting. And uh, we have also uh, reviewed it in comparison to the American Creosote, uh, Creosote Site Reuse Plan. And the, uh, because this actual uh, I Street right of way was contemplated as being the gateway into the park uh, for that reuse plan, and uh, this would not affect that uh, in that it would still leave sufficient right of way width uh, for the I Street right of way to still be utilized. Thank you. Are there any members of the audience that would like to speak uh, to this issue? Council? Move the approval. Do you have a motion? Mr. Townsend. Thank you, Mr. President. Did you have any comments from the Sandless Beach Association or anything of that nature? Councilman Townsend, I did have communication from the association, and they just wanted to verify uh, that the amount of right-of-way uh, being requested for vacation wouldn't impact that reuse plan. And when we told them it would leave sufficient width, they were satisfied. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? There is a second. There is? Okay. Any further discussion? Please vote. Ms. Myers, vacation of right away at I on I Street. Okay, and that passes unanimously. Thank you, Madam Clark. Item 6B is a public hearing to consider imposing stormwater service assessments and approving 2012 stormwater assessment law. Okay, thank you. Before we get started on that, uh, I have to read something in, into the record here. Uh, the purpose of tonight's public hearing is to hear comments about the proposed stormwater assessment program for fiscal year 2012 through 13 and is required by City Ordinance 52-00 in the Florida Statutes. Stormwater assessment program was implemented in November 2000 and was imposed for the first time in August 2001 for fiscal year 2001 and 2. This is the 12th year of the program. For fiscal year 2012 through 2013, the city's charge per ESU remains unchanged from last year and is $68.43. The assessments will generate approximately $2.45 million for fiscal year 2012 through 13. The stormwater assessment revenue can only be used to fund stormwater management services and facilities. The city mailed first class notices to all newly improved properties and published a notice of this public hearing in the Pensacola News Journal on August 2nd, 2012. This public hearing provides all property owners with the opportunity to be heard regarding the stormwater assessment program and the proposed rates. After the public hearing, the city council will decide whether to adopt the annual rate resolution for fiscal year 2012 through 2013. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. The, uh, the council, as you'll see, you have received some written communications on this issue uh, that follows the, the memorandum itself. Uh, if you have any specific questions in regards to the stormwater uh, system itself, uh, Mr. Owens is here. If you have questions about the fee, the imposition of the, uh, the assessment, then uh, Mr. Barker can address those issues. Okay, thanks, sir. There's two members of the public that have asked to address this issue. First is Ms. Dolores Curry. Welcome, Ms. Curry. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Dolores Curry, 1007 West Government Street. Um, I'm here to ask you, not tell, ask, that you consider not raising this again this year. 
The reason being, I'm out here every day talking to people, and people are really hurting financially right now. They're losing homes. Some of them can't hardly afford to buy food. And this is a, a really a hard thing on a lot of people. Mine, I don't know where the $68 came from that you know about, but mine was $104.70 this year. I'm on a fixed income myself, so I know how it is. If you don't pay the stormwater fee, the city has the right to put a lien against your property, and they can take it for the stormwater fee, which I feel is very unfair. But that's the law, so we have to go by it. But I would just like to see you all not do it this year. Maybe next year things might be better. But for right now, and I would like to see a breakdown of where all this money is going, because I know in my area, which is the Sanders Beach area, I don't see anything being done down there that I could say comes from stormwater. I know Bayou Tahar gets a lot of stuff over there. So I would just like to see where it's going. I, th I think there are a lot of, of citizens who uh, would like to see this also. So just, if, just consider it, please, just for this year. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Curry. Mr. Reynolds, could you see that Ms. Curry gets a, a, a breakdown of what we've done in the past and what we have planned for the next couple of years? Yes, sir, I can certainly okay, do that. Okay, we've got our contact information over here. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Myers. Yes, I would like to have the same information, especially uh, in light of uh, the situation on Burgess Road uh, that hardly has a stormwater system. And uh, so I, I'd, li I'd like this, the information you send to Ms. Curry also. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would like at this time uh, some sort of an explanation as to why we're improving it so that the citizens will have a, a, a better picture of what's going on. You know, we say we're, we're doing things and we've heard about the projects. Some of us have heard about the various projects that are going on in various districts, districts throughout the city. But I believe that a, a explanation as to why the city wishes to take this action at this time would be helpful. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, uh, Mr. Owens, do you want to take that? Uh, yes, sir, and I'll have uh, Ms. Mr. Owens, if uh, you can come down here and, and help, and, and while he's on his way down here. Uh, you know, I think probably the best example of, of, of what the stormwater system has done, uh, as, as we said earlier, this has been in effect for a little over 10 years, and during that time period, you have a city that was essentially designed over time uh, uh, to, to only deal with relatively minor uh, flood stormwater issues. During that 10-year period, you've seen some significant uh, increases in the ability of water movement in the city itself. And, and that has a big impact not only in getting the water off the streets, but also in protecting uh, our bodies of water uh, uh, where that water ends up flowing into. And so it is both an environmental issue and also a safety and a flooding issue as well. But uh, with that being said, uh, Mr. Owens can talk a little bit about some of the projects we have, we have addressed <coughs> lately and, and some of the long-term effects. Uh, Council President, uh, some of the projects that we of late have done, especially in the Sanders Beach area, we just completed this, the Cypress Street project, and that was a $1.3 million project. Uh, as many as you know, that, that provides enhanced stormwater treatment for that area. Uh, that was uh, previously untreated going out to uh, uh, Pensacola Bay. Uh, to take you back to 2000, uh, when Council adopted the Goals and Strategies policy, uh, when the stormwater utility fee was adopted, uh, since that time, uh, we have spent almost $28 million on stormwater projects. Uh, most of that is based at uh, pollutant attenuation uh, and retrofit projects uh, from one one uh, from one shoreline of the city to the other and uh, we have uh, I won't go into the detail with you but we have a whole listing of projects that are coming up for 13 and uh, as Mr. Reynolds said we'll be glad to share that with any of you who, who want to see that list and they are also in the budget okay and, and I'd like to, to just have you clarify for um, the public here um, a, a lot of what we have done is, you said, retrofitting existing systems, and that's to treat the stormwater, which we are mandated um, um, to do. And I don't know if it's the state or the federal government that comes in here and tests our water quality. And, and we, we could be under heavy fines um, and, uh, for, for not doing this. That's, that's one thing. 
the other thing is is that we take criticism a lot of times for different areas not getting um, um, proper the the proper stormwater things for example uh, a businessman from Garden Street um, that I do business with pretty regularly was complaining to me about it well that's a state owned system right there that's not a not a city owned um, system and I think much of what happens up along 9th Avenue is the same way and uh, I believe that's a state road if I'm if so so some of the some of the places where we've got the biggest flooding problems um, really there's very little that the city can um, do anything about and the Burgess Road area until we recently accepted that what um, Ms. Myers about five years ago that had been a state road as as well so now we're having to come in and try to clean up from behind the state on, on that and uh, but I just want want people to understand it's not always about being able to just control the flooding it's to treat that 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 runoff that that we're getting that we're mandated to do and so all right I've got uh, Mr. Townsend Mr. Weiss and Ms. Myers thank you Mr. President I, I guess uh, if we try to recognize all the cures that we need to, to make it, it would be, be tremendous. And just to follow up on uh, Mrs. Curry's uh, comments, uh, the concerns regarding the timeliness of what, what we're doing, uh, take under consideration each agency uh, project their budget, project what money is that they need, and then they make assessments. So these assessments are not just coming from the city. These assessments are coming from the county. These assessments are coming from ECUA. These assessments are coming from Gus Powell, which comes to the magnitude of, of, of issues for our citizens. And uh, the town is that uh, they have to just find the money somewhere at these hard times uh, to respond to all of these assessments. Uh, and I'm just wondering whether we could look back and reflect in the mirror and determine do we actually need this at this time recognizing there's a need to continue the stormwater uh, effort and to ensure that we do the things that we're trying to do uh, but do we re is it paramount and, and the priority that we really do it at this time taking under consideration the uh, obvious hardship that is going to have on our citizens and we saw the letters uh, and so we don't have to uh, suspect, uh, suppose that uh, there's a hardship out there. We know there's a hardship out there. So I, I, you know, I supported this, and I have some issues regarding uh, whether, in fact, uh, these stormwater uh, efforts were just being isolated in certain areas. But I've been assured, and I've seen some of the uh, scheduling, and I've been assured that an, an attempt is being made to ensure that this is an overall attempt to, to uh, satisfy all of our citizens. But the timeliness might be an effort which we might want to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, I'd also like to tag on what Councilman Townsend was talking about. Um, you know, a lot of our city, I guess almost half, the boundary is set by the water that surrounds us. And when the stormwater um, project and plan was put in place years ago, it was based on an estimation, and we weren't sure if we would hit our mark on that or not. Um, and whether it's political or um, whatever the issue, as the years went on, um, it was never adjusted. It might have been evaluated, and we knew where we stood. Um, but this is our first uh, big adjustment that we've made. Um, and then, you know, so I just wanted to make sure everyone remembered that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Myers. Yes, thank you. Um, I am going to support it because I, I do feel that uh, that that is needed. Um, but I, I I would like for the citizens to have easier access to where the projects are. And you mentioned it's in the budget. Well, the budget is 500 pages long, <laughs> and I was wondering if maybe there's some way we could put uh, that information up on the city's website because that is, is a, a big issue uh, that, that concerns a lot of people because it does involve an expense and a lot of people just feel they can't uh, afford it. But I think if we could put, uh, make the information readily accessible uh, so that people could go and see what benefits they're going to be getting uh, from uh, the the fees that I think that would be helpful. Mr. Reynolds. 
Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, that, that's a great idea, Councilwoman Myers, and, and we're going to go one further. We're going to put in both the past projects uh, and then we'll also put in the future uh, projects that we have slated. That way everybody understands. And I'll make sure that we've got a nice big button so people know exactly where to go to okay, for Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Dr. Brad. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to clarify from, from hearing what um, various council members said, it sounded like we're raising the rates, but we're holding them the same. And I just wanted to make sure that that was, that was clear. And, and I also wanted to address Ms. Curry's comment about, you know, where is this 68, I pay 104. And those are, we sort of chunked houses in different sizes, and 68 is a standard unit house, and different si size houses have different rates. And that's if, if citizens are hearing 68 and they're not paying 68, it's just to clarify that confusion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, thank you. And I'm just going to tack on what uh, Dr. Pratt said. We're not raising rates this year. That happened last year. If, uh, Ms. Curry, if you have a home that's uh, in the neighborhood of 1,600 square feet to 2,500 square feet, you're at $68. If you go before, uh, above 2,500 square feet to 5,600 square feet, you go to 104. So you must be in a little bit larger house. So we aren't raising the, uh, the, the fee this year. So just I uh, wanted to make that clear. Thank you. And, and that's not just the size of the, the house, the footprint of the house. That's all the hardscape on the yeah. property. That'd be driveways, sidewalks, exactly patios. Right. Yeah. I'm okay. sorry. All right. All right, Mr. S Paul Swinney. Thank you, sir. Council. My name is Paul Swinney. I reside at 7446 Baywoods Lane. I own property on Creighton, rental property. I here regarding this notice that I received, uh, I understand the need for this fee, but my property, I have photos of the property. I don't know if there's any way to show those today, but uh, basically my property has become a retention pond from the street. I'm paying a fee for this runoff, but uh, the water's running the wrong way. Uh, if I was receiving a service, I completely understand the fee. But again, because of the direction the water's running, it's all uh, from the road. There's a slight berm around across the front of my <laughs> property, which basically creates a bowl around my property. The water from my house and from the hardscape around it does not flood the yard. It's not until the water exceeds that berm that my yard floods. So uh, I would like some relief from this fee, if, if possible, until something is fixed in that area. Okay. Before you leave, sir, Ms. DeWee says. Thank you, Mr. President. I just, I have your letter in front of me, Mr. Sweeney, and uh, it looks like it's dated the 20th and that it was received by the mayor's office. I just wanted to ensure, Mr. President, that they will follow up on this uh, with Mr. Sweeney. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, yeah, yes, Mr. President, and one of the things that we need to take a look at uh, various portions of Crichton are, are not uh, city roads, they're state, and so we'll just need to uh, identify what portions are, and then and we, but we'll certainly follow up on it. I would like to say there's a stretch of Crichton between Hilltop and Spanish Trail. About half of that's in the city. Mm -hmm. My property is in the city. Okay. And uh, again, like I said, there is no curbing in that area. There is no storm draining in that area. So basically the um, the road itself is what causes most of the, the runoff. Okay, and there's one other councilman, uh, Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. Before the meeting started, Mr. Sweeney shared with me some photographs of what actually occurs during a rainstorm, and I'd like to know if it's possible to get someone from Public Works or Engineering to go out there and take a look, or at least to have a look at the pictures that he has prepared and brought with him so that we can get a visual concept of what's actually going on during rainstorms and that might help us to all better understand what's actually happening and, and what his concern is. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, uh, yes, sir, we'll certainly do that. We'll have uh, staff to go out there and, and analyze it and take a look. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Gerald. Thank you, sir. Are there any more um, comments, questions? Council, which, uh, yes, sir. And after your remarks, sir, if you would just fill out a blue card and give it to the clerk um, with your, your, your information. If there's not one up there by the podium, uh, the clerk will have one over there. 
Okay, thank you. My apologies for that. I'm new to the city. Uh, my name is Alexander Cosman. I'm at 2320 North 14th Avenue. I did submit a letter um, pursuant to the public notice, and, and I'm not here to challenge it or begrudge the city. Um, it's right. Uh, you know, it has expenses and services to, to meet and services to provide, and our responsibility is to, you know, help maintain an income stream for the city to meet those expenses. What I would ask is that as we move forward, and maybe not this year, but for next year, is that the city charge a department or um, authorize a community action committee to work with the city um, to provide mitigation um, installations or, or opportunities for homeowners who want to reduce their stormwater runoff. Uh, a couple things will be accomplished. The city will work with the citizens to reduce the tax burden. Citizens are working with the city to reduce the expenses and the tax on, on the city infrastructure. And then we're returning water to the water table, which you know is going to benefit um, you know, ECUA and, and, and our environment as a whole. Um, and then once those mitigation installations are in place, uh, prorate our, ta our uh, stormwater runoff tax, either based on the mitigation that we choose or on a, um, uh, a, a, a formula that, that uh, figures out the number of gallons that we've diverted from the, from the runoff system. I believe and that's already in place. Don't we have a system, Mr. Reynolds said, uh, uh, if Mr. Owens might, don't we already have a, a, a process where you can um, mitigate um, on your property? Mr. Owens. Uh, Mr. President, the, um, the way it's set up, as Councilman Johnson uh, previously read, mm -hmm. it's based on impervious area. It's uh, increments of impervious area. So in essence, there would be a way to mitigate that by removing the amount of impervious area on your property mm -hmm. and getting it below certain thresholds. Now, what could be visited is to look at more defined increments, if you will, uh, instead of having larger blocks uh, to coincide with what this gentleman is, is speaking of. And that would, and it would itself would serve as a mitigating factor. So it could be it's something that definitely could be looked at. But when you were saying that, were you talking about maybe putting in a, your own little retention pond um, area to handle some of that runoff itself? or? Um, what, did, what did you have in mind, sir? Well, I suppose that could be one of the mitigation factors. What, what I did, and I can only speak based on my experience, is, is put the gutters into the ground, ran them uh, uh, out onto the property so that the water, you know, resurfaced and then was reabsorbed mm -hmm. um, so that it didn't run the slope of the property into the street. You know, uh, others might be cisterns, rain barrels, retention ponds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would, would presume that it would be in the best interest of the city to determine what types of mitigation factors would be um, reasonable and most efficient and then have them available, you know, with some assistance for installation, inspection, and, and approval for then that proration. Okay. Thanks, sir. Uh, thank Ms. You. Myers. Uh, yes, I want to thank you for uh, coming down here and sharing those ideas with us. Uh, I'm. Uh, really very interested in the ideas you have and I would like to let you know that we have an environmental advisory board we uh, it's made up of really in, incredibly uh, uh, knowledgeable uh, people in the area in many different areas of the environment I think it would be great if you um, could attend the next meeting and bring those ideas up because uh, that's a, a, a a board that's been created by ordinance for the city council and they bring recommendations to us so we just had a meeting uh, Wednesday uh, I think we meet the third third Wednesday of every month but if you will contact me uh, and give me your email address I will make sure that uh, you're notified when the environmental advisory board meets and we would, we would love to have you uh, attend that, that board and give them your ideas. Okay, well, thank you, ma'am. I'll uh, look for the announcement. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Townsend just reminded me of the two-term um, um, 
for a council member. <laughs> but but I, I think, the, I just wanted to say, I think the public hearing is a little bit different because it, this really is a time for inquiry. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times that you just want to be able to, to, to respond to something or ask, ask questions. Mr. Townsend. Thank you. I, I think this is my second time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll make it short. Just a concern that I have. If you look at, at the uh, chambers here and you just see the small number of citizens that we have here, uh, you would think that if they receive some correspondence regarding an assessment that we will be overflow with citizens raising some concerns. And that, that is a big issue here in the city of Pensacola in terms of the lack of, uh, <coughs> obvious lack of uh, concern about what's going on in the city. Uh, I, I, I think we would be more concerned if we had a full house here and this was actually affecting uh, a whole lot of people in a negative manner. Uh, we have to uh, suspect that it possibly is. Uh, I'm going to support it uh, because I know it's needed and uh, it's something that, that we really need to ensure that we have the proper, uh, take care of some of the issues that, that, uh, that we need to regarding our waterways, etc. cetera. Uh, but, we really need to have folks who feel that there's some problem affecting them negatively and they see assessment, et cetera, need to come and voice their opinion. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Geralds. Thank you, Mr. President. And I will admit that I was on council when we originally put this stormwater management plan in operation. And the concern at that time, which is still to me, is protecting our water safety, protecting our environment. And at that time, I lobbied for county involvement and I'm wondering if there is a concern about runoff from the county now county residents may which rejected participating in the stormwater management project at the beginning but is there do we have a concern or do we need to be concerned about the runoff from the county that we actually treat here in the city of Pensacola well, Mr. Gerald, you do have a right to, to be concerned, but even if it's not running off into the, the, the city um, systems, is the runoff from the county outside of the city into our waterways, we still get gigged for. Exactly. You know, when, yes, as it comes down to Bayou Tahar through Carpenter's Creek or um, into, out, out of Escambia River into the Escambia Bay. Um, we get gigged for, for all of that. And we've been very aggressive on our stormwater treatment um, um, in, in mitigating some of, some of that runoff, the harmful things to the bays. And one of the ways we know that what we're, we've been doing um, has been effective is Mr. Johnson looked out his home, his beautiful home on Bayou Tahar on his waterfront property and, and uh, uh, thanks, salt, thanks. salt. I appreciate that. Saw <laughs> <Salt, laughs> dolphins. Uh, what was it? About two, three months ago. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. First time I think in your lifetime that you've seen that. Exactly right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Twenty-two so, years. So, any anyway. So, uh, council, what's your pleasure? <laughs> Move the approval. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Please vote. Okay, and that passes on a vote of seven to one. Thank you. Are there any quasi-judicial hearings, Madam Clerk? No, sir. Mr. Reynolds, Mayor's report. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, Mr. Barker will give his financial report. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds, uh, Council President, members of City Council. This is the uh, monthly report for the month of July, and uh, I don't see it set up here, so I'll just give a verbal report. Uh, <coughs> the, uh, the items we usually look at are your franchise fees, public service taxes as it relates to the general fund. Those are down only about 0.43% or $44,000. The uh, half cent sales tax is down about 1.3% or $36,000. And uh, totally in the general fund, counting your municipal revenue sharing, uh, it looks like we're going to be down about 87000 through the uh, uh, nine months that are recorded here. So we did make an adjustment, if council recalls, before the June report, which was about a million dollar adjustment downward in our revenues, made the correction on our appropriations. And this is how we look uh, currently. 
The uh, other funds of the city, local option sales tax is down about 0.64%. We did not make an adjustment on that in, in the June resolution. And we're down about 35,000. Local option gasoline tax down about 0.57% or $6,600. Uh, the tree planting trust fund, uh, the balance is 676. 216, $676,216, and in the park purchases fund, $38,068. Uh, the other that I report on are our pensions. Of course, we're still working with our, our union representatives and dealing with our pension issues um, and not anticipated to have an effect as it relates to uh, the $2.6 million issue uh, that we were trying to address at the end of fiscal year 11. Uh, the actuaries uh, presented those reports to the pension boards, but the boards have held off improving those, so those gave us another year to deal with the unions on these issues. And then there were uh, two bids over $25,000. The first is to Ken Griffin Landscape for landscape maintenance service at the airport. It was, it, this is the second year of a two-year maintenance contract. It's a renewal. And the amount of the uh, contract is for $94,842. Uh, the second contract we had was the enforcement video for digital in-car video cameras for the police department. Um, and the amount was $48,964. I do want to remind council of the uh, first public hearing. Uh, on September 5th at 515 in Council Chambers uh, and the final public hearing on September 12th at 515 in Council Chambers. And with that, that concludes the July monthly report. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Owens. Thank you, Mr. President. And we will make sure that uh, everybody has a copy of that, a hard copy, of, or excuse me, a, a copy of that emailed to you. Okay. Uh, at that point, at this point, uh, that ends the mayor's report. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Are there any petitions? No, uh, excuse me, I'm, uh, council communications. I'm sorry, Mr. Weiss. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, I would just like to follow up on an uh, issue that occurred this past weekend um, with Fire Station Three and request an update, um, either via email or if they have some information tonight um, from the the fire department. Um, we all know that last year we had a mold inspection and a complete um, plan uh, put forth for either the refurbishment or rebuild of Station 3 due to damage from Ivan and water intrusion since Hurricane Ivan. Um, it's in terrible condition at this point. It was built in 1968 and is actually a sister station to Station 6, which was completely replaced. Um, and I understand on Saturday there was an issue with the electricity not working and Gulf Power actually had to pull the entire meter um, because of the water intrusion and damage and take it off the grid. Um, I understand that city staff was, at, you know, city maintenance was able to go out there and repair this and they are back um, on the grid with Gulf Power instead of uh, the generator. But I'd like an update um, as to uh, the plans for uh, rebuilding and also the funding of that, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Myers. Uh, are we on council communication? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, well, I have two announcements. One, and th then I want to update the council on something, uh, is the mayor's neighborhood cleanup will be in District 2 or portions of District 2 um, this Saturday. So basically, if you live um, anywhere around John Carroll or Langley or parts of Creighton Road, um, that whole area, um, you are included. And uh, I think that you should have gotten something uh, was sent out in the mail, uh, I believe, to all the residents of, of that area. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And also, uh, I plan to have a town hall meeting on August the 30th uh, at the uh, Grace Lutheran Church on 9th Avenue, 6601 9th Avenue at 630 in the sanctuary to have a discussion with uh, the residents who live around the Dunmire Wood Park 
I would like to know what improvements you would like to uh, see happen in that park. So I invite everyone to come out and attend. The other issue I would like to bring up is an article in today's paper in the Pensacola News Journal entitled, Pensacola Racks Up Legal Fees. And it mentions two lawsuits. One is Occupy Pensacola. Uh, I suppose uh, I haven't seen the pleadings in that lawsuit. I don't know who the defendant is. I assume it's the mayor and his legal and his official capacity. Uh, and the other one is my lawsuit. I found it extremely interesting that the Pensacola News Journal only mentioned those two lawsuits. And since it mentioned the lawsuit that I have brought against the mayor in his official capacity over uh, his uh, memorandum to the council president and city, city council concerning uh, limitations on our ability to communicate with uh, council with uh, city employees. Apparently, that's racked up uh, about six thousand dollars in legal fees uh, for the city. But I would like for the citizens to know who's paying the other side. Me, me. No taxpayers are paying to defend your rights under our charter, charter, I am paying the legal fees. Now, I want to, counsel to know what this lawsuit is about, so I have given you copies of my complaint that was filed. I have given you copies of the mayor's response to my complaint, and I've also given you the rest of the story that was not reported in the Pensacola News Journal when they did a story on this lawsuit and the mayor's requirement to respond. What he is required to respond to, and you have a pink tab, if you will look at that, you will see that what was issued by the court was a temporary writ of quo warranto. We ask for a writ of quo warranto. Quo warranto is basically a very ancient writ that challenges a person and authority in, in terms of by what authority do, does that person do something? It has to do with uh, separation of powers, the executive branch of the uh, legislative branch. Apparently, the judge felt that I had made out what's called a prima facie case um, and issued a temporary writ of quo warranto. That wasn't mentioned in the press, and that's pretty significant. And the mayor has, I believe, until the 27th, according to the judge's ruling, to answer uh, this uh, temporary writ of quo warranto. So it's no sig insignificant matter that this temporary writ was issued. What I hope that council would do is read this, all of the pleadings in this lawsuit so that you will understand fully the legal issues that are before the court because this is a lawsuit of great public importance because it goes to the very heart of our democracy, transparency in government. And I'm really surpri surprised that the Pensacola News Journal gives the impression to me anyway that they think that this lawsuit is trivial. Well, obviously, the judge doesn't think so. Or that the Occupy Pensacola lawsuit is trivial. The Occupy Pensacola lawsuit is about the right of the citizens to freedom of speech and to redress their grievances to the government. That is not a frivolous issue. Now, what I'd also like to know is why the Pensacola News Journal, I don't know if they did or not, 
But I went online today to the Escambia County Clerk of Courts website, and I just Googled, Googled in City of Pensacola, and you know what? The City of Pensacola has been sued hundreds of times. They, this city is listed as a defendant many, many times in lawsuits. But I got even more curious, and I made an open records request that the clerk got today, because when you talk about legal fees, Litigation isn't probably where most of your legal fees are going to come, uh, at, come from. The mayor's office uh, gets a lot of legal opinions and from outside legal counsel. So I have done an open records request, submitting an open records request, and I've asked for basically four things. Records that evidence payment of all legal fees of whatever kind provided to the city or any entity affiliated with the city for outside legal services. Two, records of all invoices for legal services of whatever kind provided to the city of Pensacola and its various entities, boards, commissions, authorities, and public officials since January 1, 2011. Three, all contracts with outside companies or individuals for legal services. And four, all legal fees paid by the general employee pension fund since January 1st, 2011. Because it, the reality is this. The article in the Pensacola News Journal, while it's factually true, is misleading. Because it gives the public the impression that the city has tremendous legal fees at, as a result of these two lawsuits. So I want the public to look at this in the right perspective and you have to understand that I contend that my rights as a city council person and therefore the rights of the public have been violated when there are unreasonable restrictions placed on my ability to obtain information. It goes to the very heart of transparency in government. So. I make no apologies for this lawsuit. I am happy that I filed it, and I am very pleased that the judge gave us a temporary writ, writ of quo warranto, and uh, that doesn't mean that we will ultimately prevail. I hope we do, but um, we'll take it one day at a time, and um, I hope that uh, what I have done will improve our government for not only the city council, but all of our citizens and employees and the mayor's office. Thank you. Dr. Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to make sure the rest of the council knew that we are having our first complete streets ad hoc committee meeting tomorrow. And it's not the government street opening complete streets story. It's a much broader, much happier discussion, I hope. Um, it's going to be tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. The agenda just got sent out. And there's more information on its way. I, I don't remember how to access the K drive, so I can't get to it yet. But, um, but it'll, um, there's, there, there'll be plenty of information, and I hope it'll be a good discussion. And I hope that the other council members will be able to bring their nominee to the committee. And, and an apology um, regarding legal outside counsel. I was tasked at the last council meeting to uh, work on the language about the question of department in the charter. And I, um, I have had many other things going on. And so I have not worked with Mr. Messer, but I will be doing that soon. And we can hope to have an answer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. This is just an observation, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to ask Mr. Reynolds or someone on his staff to check with ECUA and find out what the requirements are. On my way to City Council, to City Hall actually today, as I was cruising down MLK, Martin Luther King Drive, something caught my attention, and it was a bus stop sign that was partially covered by a tree branch. But as I proceeded south to Cervantes, I did not count one bench <coughs> from Tahar to Cervantes. And I began to wonder to myself, and I will admit that uh, I drive down that street frequently, 
but I had not noticed it, and I guess people in their cars really don't notice what's in the bus stop. But I'm wondering what the requirements are for benches at the bus stops, because we do have elderly and sometimes disabled individuals who are waiting for a bus, but if there's not a bench from Tahar to Cervantes, I don't know what to do. And I, we all know that ECU has, ECUA has the um, ability to manipulate and to do what they wish with the fares and the buses, et cetera. But I just became ECAT, excuse me, not ECUA. Thank you. <laughs> we'll make them buy the benches. Somebody could buy them. Thank you for that correction. But I'd just like to have sort of an answer as to are there any requirements that would encourage them to place um, sitting uh, uh, opportunities and facilities. I'm not asking for a covered bus stop, but it just, as I counted the bus stops all the way down to Cervantes, and I'm saying to myself, well, heck, there's not a bench anywhere around here. So if a person with a disability or an elderly person had to wait for the bus, it's bad enough standing in the sun, or even sitting in the sun for that matter, but if there are no benches. So if we can sort of get an explanation from uh, ECAT as to what the requirements are and do we need to have buses at least at some of those locations where we may have individuals who um, might need that as they wait for the bus. Thank you. I'd, I'll give that to Mr. Reynolds if he cares to um, um, respond, but we gave that over to the county uh, a couple of years ago, didn't we? Uh, actually, no, Mr. President. There was a resolution that did come before the body to do that. It, mm -hmm. was, it was not approved. Uh, recently, about nine months ago, this body approved a contract with a, a uh, an organization that is in the process of repairing, or excuse me, replacing all of the uh, uh, current bus benches in the in the city on the city property. I don't know the answer to Councilman Gerald's question specifically, but certainly we'll find out. And we can also take a look at. Uh, having some benches placed in certain areas as well. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it from two different aspects. One, whether or not it's, re it's required. Uh, but it really is a bigger question as even if it's not required, shouldn't we possibly take a look at providing benches? And we, we will certainly do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, and thank you. Uh, Mr. Spencer. Thank you. Just a quick um, follow up on Councilwoman Pratt's um, reminder of tomorrow's meeting, um, I was also encouraged to receive from Mr. Colby Reese, um, and I think all of us did, receive the, the letter from him. He was recently in Pensacola. He's a co-founder of the uh, bike sharing program, the transportation program uh, in Miami Beach. I have met uh, Mr. Reese at the Congress for New Urbanism conference and uh, invited him to visit Pensacola and I was happy that he came to our area and he was favorably impressed and was fortunate enough to be here uh, the day of the return to the future celebration and met several council members um, at um, an event, a luncheon event. So I, um, I asked him to send material and I think it will be very uh, valuable in, um, as we look at complete streets. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Uh, I just want to follow up on uh, Councilman Pratt's uh, remarks regarding the uh, complete street. Do we have any indication on the parameters uh, as far as the schedule? Uh, it, it would give some insight as to uh, who we can possibly consider for appointment. Do we know the schedule and how many times they will meet? And uh, are we going to do that tomorrow? I, I think maybe. You might have to wait until we can uh, provide that information to any prospective candidates who we might want to consider. And and that's fine. I was hoping we could appoint them tomorrow and have them part of the discussion. I, I, um, I'll tell you what I told people who asked me about. Or I, I talked to potential nominees that. I'm hoping that this is no more than six months. I hope it's not even six months, very, you know, short term. And to sort of keep the momentum maybe every other week is sort of the commitment I'm thinking. Um, this will be subject to discussion at the committee. Um, and also I was just, in the agenda I had a slot 
uh, an item for what time is most convenient. I chose tomorrow morning mostly because I was so late in scheduling it that tomorrow morning was, was about the only time left, I thought. And so, but, but I, I'm open to a discussion at the committee. Um, so if, if you haven't gotten your nominee in line, that's fine. We can, we're not going to do anything yet. Thank you. Is that it, sir? That's it. Thank okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to uh, thank and uh, congratulate Dr. Pratt on her uh, recent effort uh, in downtown Pensacola with the Pensacola Mess Hall. Um, it was uh, a hall there that uh, uh, they had math, engineering, science, and other things going on there. Uh, my girlfriend was in town a couple weeks ago, and we had the pleasure of, of going in and saying hello to uh, Dr. Pratt and her husband uh, had a room full of, of children and parents uh, uh, in there working on different projects. And uh, it was just a, a real delight to go down there and spend some time there with her. And I just want to commend her on uh, what she gives back to this community. Sometimes uh, folks don't realize uh, some of the things that, that, that goes on outside of just seeing us here at City Council. But uh, she uh, recently even experienced uh, some, some negative things being said about us. But there's, there's so much more that really goes on that than people see and I just want to commend uh, Dr. Pratt and her uh, husband there for the Pensacola Mess Hall. It just uh, I think finished up uh, August 18th and I think they're looking for sponsors in a, bu a bigger building next uh, uh, next spring and summer so um, I just want to recognize her and uh, uh, it was a really uh, really unique uh, cool thing and I hope uh, it comes back next spring but thank you very much for all you do. And, and all of us, really. Thank you, everyone here. But there's so many, there's so much things I could say. I'll just stop there. But I could recognize everyone up here for different things that they do and, and value they add to this community um, that goes unrecognized. But thank you all for all you do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Madam President. You can clear my line. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Is that it? That was actually quite brief. So, okay. Petitions. There are none. Okay. That brings us to the consent agenda. These are items that all passed unanimously in the Committee of the Whole. What's your pleasure? Move to approve. Second. Motion and second, Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to hold item B. Item B. Okay. Any others? Okay, so we'll be voting on items A, C, D, E, F, G. And H. Um, hmm? D. D. Okay. So we'll be voting on items A, C, E, F, G, and H. Clear Mr. Johnson's slide, please. Clear me too. Okay. okay. What was that, Dr. Pratt? I'm good. I thought my button got pressed, but it didn't, but okay. I'm okay. Okay. All right. Please vote. And that passes unanimously. Um, item B, appointment, Parks and Recreation Board. Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. And the reason I held that item is because I'm concerned that during the time when we were considering the ordinance to change the way we do business, and although I see that it does appear on the committee reports, I just do not want to miss the opportunity because we had two individuals that we had been considering, and we wanted, and I'd like to know at this time, when do we have an opportunity to have them placed on the recreation board. Is that something that we will be able to address under the committee report? And as you all may recall, when we were talking about it and we were voting on the ordinance itself, we removed their names from the ordinance. But I believe, if my memory serves me well, that we had a unanimous decision to come back to this and make sure that those two individuals representing race and gender would be placed on the on the recreation board because of their qualifications and their willingness to do so and the number of votes that they see received when we were considering them for uh, placement on that board is that something we're going to come back to under committee report or uh, should we handle it now well my recollection must be different than yours i thought we'd already agreed to place them on there we did on monday yes yeah. so we placed them on monday well i was absent on monday y'all yes. didn't tell me that <laughs> So have they been nominated, and will they be in the next nomination? No. They're, they're, that's they're what in. we're voting on now. Yeah. Okay. Remember. Well, in that case, I'll um, withdraw my holding of item B, and I'm comfortable voting for it. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that all you had, Ms. DeWeese? I, I see your lights Yes, on. I just okay. wanted to clarify we okay. took care of it Monday. Okay, please <laughs> vote you. on item B. And that passes unanimously. Item D, Maritime Park Land Lease, Maritime Place, LLC. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. President. And uh, I, I feel like uh, we probably need to address the uh, memorandum that our city attorney uh, emailed us today, just today. Um, I see Mr. Remington and uh, Mr. Offetter in the audience. And uh, uh, we got this memorandum just today. Um, I've reviewed it <coughs> twice, um, but I'd like to I'd like to make sure that this council is aware of this. Um, I uh, would like, I, I don't have many problems with any of this except the, the uh, this provision 6G. Uh, I'd like to uh, work on that a little bit further. Um, so I don't know if we uh, set this aside and uh, have a special meeting. Um, I'm just not really sure uh, what to do uh, with these comments that we have. Um, I'd really like to work this through um, and, and get this done, um, but uh, I, I just feel like I need to bring this uh, memorandum to everyone's attention, make sure that everyone's got it, and uh, kind of get direction of where we go from here since uh, we have some uh, recommendations from our city attorney about uh, um, how to uh, deal with this uh, uh, sublease agreement. Okay, Dr. Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President, and I, I share um, Councilman Johnson's concerns about the, the 6G. I was part of the discussion at the CMPA about the, the need for ensuring that they have enough funds, especially in giving up um, uh, significant parking. And so, though I will say that for tonight, I think the, the agreement we're looking at is really about the city, whether city or CMPA as an entity, agreeing with um, Maritime Place. and. And that 6G is probably an internal issue that we might need to address as a council CMPA. Um, and so I, I would prefer not to hold up this agreement for fixing that problem. Uh, Ms. Myers. Um. Well, I, I kind of agree with with Mr. Johnson or Councilman Johnson that we probably need to discuss this further. Uh, I think that we can arrive at the 75 percent some way. I do know that people have become very creative and <laughs> how the CMPA has operated and what it has become from time to time. So I can't envision that we cannot come up with a, a way to achieve getting some of the rental uh, or funds from the, the, the renting of the ground lease for the CMPA. Uh, at the very least, we would be able, according to Mr. Messer, to Mr. Messer, even if we call this a facilities fee, we could get up to 15 percent. Is that correct, Mr. Messer? Without being being uh, in trouble with the new market tax credits, that's how I read your memo, anyway. All right, I'm I'm not. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman. I, I'm not quite sure I understand you. My my memo. My explicit recommendation regarding the <coughs> issue of the return of monies to the CMPA is to delete that provision uh, <clears throat> as it's currently phrased. Um, and I believe that uh, I would say that Councilwoman Pratt uh, has the solution to the problem, and that is to uh, follow my recommendation which does not affect the execution of this agreement between the Maritime Place and uh, solve the issue of the tax credits at a later date because it's just too complex to solve in, in 48 hours and, and negotiate in public. Um, so, you know, my recommendation stands, which is simply to uh, remove that uh, paragraph from the agreement. And that, that absolutely does not affect the execution of the agreement between the city and the student group. Uh, 
I did not understand that to be uh, Councilwoman Pratt's recommendation. Would you like for me to rephrase what, or yes. say? I was just saying that that issue is really not an issue between the city and Maritime Place. It's more an issue between the city and the CMPA. And um, it might make sense at a future council meeting to bring that issue up. We could just make a vote that we wanted to earmark 75% of these lease fees as a gift to CMPA or something like that. They're, they're, I wouldn't want to say that until I had legal opinions, but, but I think that it, it's important not to hold up this agreement for that issue. That can be resolved more internally between the city and the CMPA. It's not an issue with the Maritime Place um, group. Okay, I, under, I understand what you're saying, and uh, I, I would like to hear hear from uh, the uh, attorney for uh, the CMPA. I mean, f uh, for from uh, Maritime Place, and also uh, from the public on this. Uh, sure. I now I've got uh, um, three council members that are wishing to, to speak. Uh, if you guys would like to hear from Mr. Remington first, I'll yield to Mr. Okay. Remington. Okay. Right. Certainly. All right. Thank you, Mr. Remington. Thank you, Mr. President. Scott Remington for Maritime Place LLC. <clears throat> With respect to the 6G provision, I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a silver bullet that takes us out of that discussion completely. I think Mr. Messer's memorandum accurately re reflects the fact that we believe it's critical that that 75 percent be earmarked back to the CMPA. I think it's best for all concerned. I, I know there were some discussions this afternoon between my office and Mr. Messer's office about alternative language, and I don't know if any alternative language, if we were able, the city attorney was able to come up with any suggestions to simplify the language. No. Then, <clears throat> I mean, being unfamiliar with the way the wheels of city politics and procedures work, I don't know if it's acceptable to perhaps approve everything with a caveat that the council appoint someone to clarify that language with all the parties. I know Mr. Johnson was negotiating earlier, but if that's the only outstanding issue, if that if he can or someone can be granted the authority to negotiate that issue. Uh, to finality, it seems to me we could probably get it worked out as soon as the legal ramifications are resolved. But we'd like to leave here tonight, if possible, with this deal approved because we're staring at a negotiation deadline of September 2nd. All right. I understand. Okay. Just stay close by, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weiss. Thank you, Mr. President, and um, thank you for the clarification, Mr. Remington. Um, and I support Councilman Johnson uh, being able to track this last detail down. Um, he did a wonderful job negotiating on the behalf of the citizens as supported by City Council. So um, I don't know if you need a separate motion for that. I'm just trying to get clear on this. I know that when we talked about it Monday um, that this was a, an issue for CMPA to deal with. Councilman Johnson's on CMPA as well. so. I think we've closed the loop there, uh, making sure that it will get dealt with. Um, but I don't want to hold this up tonight. I wanted to be clear if that was the intention of Dr. Pratt and Councilman Johnson that we go ahead and approve everything. And whether we say subject to this final detail being outside of this discussion, is that what you were where you were headed? I, I, first, I'd like to go to Dr. Pratt um, okay. with that. I'm I'm content with that being um, me. That was, that was the intent of my mm -hmm. okay. comments. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, me too. I, I uh, actually, uh, the CMPA, what I heard at uh, their last meeting a week ago yesterday, um, what I've heard tonight, um, I think that the intent of this city council, the CMPA, is that some of those funds find their way uh, back to the CMPA, and that will be my, uh, my objective um, and the 75%, whatever we have to call it. Um, I think. Uh, uh, Councilwoman Meyer said that, that folks get creative. I think someone else mentioned that we've tried to do this within 48 hours. So I think that we approve this thing with, uh, with the understanding that, uh, that we have got to work out the language that will allow some of those funds to go to the CMPA. 
uh, I would be uh, more than happy to, to take that on and to work with the attorneys um, and to try to find that language that satisfies all, or at least I should say get as close to satisfaction as we can get. We're dealing with attorneys sometimes, you know how that can be, um, but I'll leave that there. But, uh, but I'd be more than happy to try to iron this out and bring agree uh, agreement that, uh, that uh, works for everyone to the best that it can. Thank you. So, Mr. President, do you, would you prefer a motion that it's subject to that or uh, well, it's I'd, just understood? It, it, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd prefer to leave that, that alone because I don't want to do anything to jeopardize right. that September 2nd se right. deadline there. My only question, and in reading this, there's one correction on page five uh, on the email. I'm not sure what page. It doesn't say on the document here. Um, item two, sub seven, fifth line. It should say private instead of priket. It's just a typo. Mm -hmm. It was on the fifth page of the email, but it's on it's on item two under use and development of premises. It's part of the red portion that was added about no hot tubs, no suntan facilities, <laughs> just door. above that. Um, but then we're saying that we're deleting it, but there are strike throughs in red, and then there's underlined in red, which appear to be additions. So I just want to be clear what we're voting on, that we're not putting that in there, because it appears from what we were given tonight in this printed form that it's being added in. And what page is that? It doesn't have pages. Or, or, I'm it's sorry, the item number. Um, is where, I mean, it's, so it's, it's in the, the body of the document we were given. If I could clarify. Yes. Sure. It is, uh, it is in red because it was a red line change that has not been accepted yet. Okay. Because of the, the meetings with the city attorney, we just left it red to highlight it. Okay. It was in the earlier drafts. It just hasn't been agreed to yet. Okay. So we're, it's not part of what we're voting on, though. Is that what? Clear. I would think it would be. Yeah, I th that's the way I read it, yeah. Okay. okay, does that take care of you, Mr. Weiss, for right now? Yes, Mr. President, thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Townsend. That does me uh, I'm okay. Okay, Mr. Johnson. I'm good, thank you. Okay. So what we have to do is figure out how we're going to handle the 68. Ms. Dubasan is still on deck here. Um, how we're going to handle the, the 6G issue is uh, um, my recommendation is for us to go ahead and approve this tonight as submitted to us. But I would like, unless there's objection from anyone on council, to designate uh, uh, Mr. Johnson to work with the attorneys on this and, and coming back and, and, and perhaps clarifying or simplifying the language somewhat. Okay, Ms. Dubasan. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Um, during the negotiations, unfortunately, the city uh, did not have an attorney present, and, and, which is why we are now having to do uh, ninth hour um, editing and revising. And I would request that the city not change the spirit of the wording that was presented in the contract because it was a very carefully thought through uh, process by all parties that were there in the negotiations. So if you could preserve the spirit and intent of the clause, even if specific words now need to be wordsmithed out or, or whatever to make it legal uh, according to the limitations of the, um, the yeah. bonding. I'd appreciate that. Yeah, and I think everybody on council agrees with that. Okay, any more input? Mr. Uh, President, would uh, I yes. comment on that? Yes. I'll address my remarks to the council. I, I, I grow weary of these accusations that somehow the city attorney's office dropped the ball. The, the city attorney's office had 48 hours to review a $12 million lease, coordinate with about six di different attorneys and three different financial advisors. I want to emphasize again, I represent the city of Pensacola. I represent this council. CMPA wants to get an attorney. That's their duty. It's not my duty to appear and negotiate for the CMPA. They act as an agent for the city. The interests are diverse. I didn't create this structure. I have to deal with it. So I'm sort of commending myself indirectly. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Myers. Yes, I want to thank Mr. Messer. You did an excellent job um, of reviewing this, and uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, you went through it very thoroughly, gave it a lot of thought, and uh, did an excellent job. I should get a quote warrant up for that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I just wanted to throw this this out. If if we approve this, 
uh, with uh, paragraph 6G as, as it is, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come back and modify this, the, this contract. Now what we could do is approve it with de uh, deleting um, paragraph G uh, and direct the, si the, the city and the CMPA to, nego to uh, negotiate this issue because it really is between the CMPA and the city. It's not between any, any of us and Maritime Place. So you just have to remember if we approve this as it is, we're going to have to then come back and modify the contract. Am I correct, Mr. Messer? Yeah, yes, ma'am. And, and just to make sure that everybody understands, and I think they do, they, there is no question that we can accomplish the objective if the objective is to return a certain sum of money uh, to the CMPA to fund it. The issue is, as the verbiage is presently constituted, it doesn't pass tax law muster. Now, we can figure out the verbiage and fix it. We just don't have time to fix it within the time period that, that, that we're negotiating in. So there are several. Uh, one option is, is as Councilwoman um, Myers suggested. Uh, so there, there's, I want to make sure everybody understands. The objective is going to be accomplished. It's just going to take time because it's not as simple as changing happy to glad. You're dealing with a tax code. I'd like to make a motion. Well, is it a is it a substitute motion then? Because we have a motion on the floor. Yeah, okay. I'd like to make a, a substitute motion. Okay. Okay. The motion is that we approve this agreement with a deletion of paragraph 6G and um, instruct, uh, appoint our negotiator, Mr. Johnson, to go back to the C uh, CMPA and to negotiate an agreement as to the percentage of lease um, rent that will be um, used by the CMPA. Point of order real quick, and I'm, mm -hmm. I, I will second this if we, I need to. I'm just concerned. This appeared on the consent agenda as stated for Monday. Yes. Approved unanimously without any of these changes discussed. Um, so I think the cleanest way is, is we don't need this all this substitute because the original one did not have it in it. Mm -hmm. So if we want to be smart and have a clean motion and a clean action. Um, it didn't have it on Monday. Is that true? Yeah, it is true, but but it was what I think was again my memory. Sometimes even three days later um, does not serve me well. Is that there was room. In, in our vote there for us to, to modify this for tonight. So perhaps it shouldn't have gone on the consent agenda to begin with. But, okay. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Sorry. Well, then I second the um, changes. Thank you. Okay. Call the question. <laughs> okay. So before we can vote on what Ms. Meyer said, we have to agree to have it as the substitute motion. So. Please vote. Before that, before that, even on the substitute motion, I needed to request or, or abstain um, from this vote on in any form of this motion on this matter. Okay, I understand. Okay, clear Mr. Spencer's light, please. Okay. So. The vote then passes one, two, three, four, five, six to one with Mr. Spencer abstaining. 
If I counted right, yes. Okay, so that, that passes six to one. So now the, the main motion is what Ms. Myers um, had stated, is to remove 6G, um, I'm, I'm from this. And my understanding is this has no effect on the, the lease with Mr. Studer and in, in the city. This is a, kind of an internal thing with the, the CMPA and the city. We don't necessarily agree with that, Mr. President. We're, mm -hmm. we're hopeful we can accomplish the same thing, yep. but, but it is a material term of the agreement between the parties. Mm -hmm. It's a tri-party agreement. Well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not particularly happy um, um, with where we're going with this. But you have my assurance, though, that we will have some language, either in amending this this lease or some other agreement that'll accomplish the same thing. So, okay, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, and I, I kind of, with Mr. Remington, you know, kind of light bulb went off. You know, this this thing has been approved by the CMPA as is and if we change it now do we have to go back to the CMPA I think we know what we're trying to accomplish here and what is the cleanest way to make that happen um, that's what I'm about I, I don't know if we're complicating it more than it needs to be complicated I think everyone sitting here wants to try to figure out a way to get the CMPA 75 percent whatever it's called I don't think it can be called rent but what is the cleanest way to to uh, to, uh, to to make that happen and I'm just not sure that pulling it um, is, the, is the way to do it because then we might have to go back to the CMPA. I'm just trying to think through that as we're, um, as we're, we're kind of flying, flying here. But um, um, I'm just not sure if we pull the whole thing or if we, if we pass it as is, if then, um, as Mr. Messer said, then we try to, when he has a little bit more time, try to get the, the proper and a language that will work um, for all parties. Um, so, I'd like to hear from from Mr. Remington and other uh, the other my other council members. Um, I, I'm just trying to figure out the cleanest way to do it, and uh, uh, so I'd like to hear from all. Thanks, uh, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. And Mr. Barker would like to address uh, this particular issue, and I I, I, I want to make clear to everybody that the understanding at this point is from our tax attorneys that leaving this in will affect our new, max, our new market tax credits, and, and that's the concern. So, Mr. Parker, if you could please. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds, and, and I do want to speak to this as the Chief Financial Officer for the City. Uh, the issue here, and we've been talking to, to New Market Tax Council for the City uh, that worked on this agreement. I think it's important uh, for council, and I think it would be most efficient for council to uh, uh, approve the motion from Ms. Myers. I think she's hit it on the head. It's complicated enough as it is. Uh, there's $10 million worth of state tax credits involved in this issue, and uh, I'll make a commitment to the council that we will come up with some type of language that between the, between the, the city and CMPA, I under, certainly understand what the council wants to do. I'm concerned about the language that has been spoken here tonight is what it's called. It's really just that, that we're gonna get some money. I don't wanna call it rents, I don't wanna call it facility fees, but there's gonna be some amount of money uh, equal to uh, a, a sum that we're gonna be receiving that, that's gonna be going back. Because all this is public record, so it, it, it Let's get the language right. Some of what has been said here tonight, uh, if somebody dealt into the public record, we don't want it to make, us, make it seem that we're trying to do something other than what the new market tax credits allow. So I understand that, that the city wants to get the CMPA some money, period, and that's the official record as the chief financial officer that I understand that the council wants to do. It's not a facility fee. It's not returning any money that we're collecting. Uh, it's not annual rent payments. It is just a sum of money that the city wants to get to the CMPA uh, for the operations of the CMPA, and I'll commit to work on that uh, without calling it any, anything besides a certain sum of money that the council wants to get. So I do think it's important that we pull this, this out of here tonight. I, and on the other end, I think it's very important you approve this agreement tonight. But I do not want to put at risk the new market tax credits, and, and 
I'm interpreting what the council has said tonight is more or less what I have just said, that there's going to be a sum of money that the city wants to give to the CMPA, and we'll see how we can get it there. But for tonight, if you would approve this without G in there, I'll make a commitment that a sum of money will get to the CMPA. Thank you. Okay. All right. I, th I think we probably need to end discussion here. And go. Do you feel compelled to address that, Mr. Remington? I'll give you the opportunity. I'll, I would just say that there, there are really two clean ways to look at it to get to the same result. One of them may be Ms. Meyer's proposal to approve it with an, a provision struck. The other way is to approve it with the provision in it and try to renegotiate that provision, the primary players in that renegotiation would be the city, but you'd be locking down your deal. If you if you take something out that has to go back to the CMPA, it's a tri-party agreement, you're going to run up on that deadline and I just take, you know, if the goal is to make rabbit stew, I hate to keep the rabbit out of the pot. You know, you got the rabbit right now, grab it. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Barker. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate your comment, sir. But as Chief Financial Officer of the City, I'm recommending to the Council that they approve it without G, which you said is one of the options. I think that is in the best interest of the City of Pensacola. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to have to ask the Council to allow me to waive the rules here so people can continue to speak on this. Mr. Reynolds. I have nothing further. Ms. Myers. Yes. I I do feel comfortable that the, the city and the CNPA can can reach an agreement on uh, the, these funds because you have to realize that this, the CNPA has some mortgages that require it to have a balanced budget. <laughs> and the CNPA right now, I believe, has a deficit of, what, about $800,000? So the CNPA has got to, to be solvent. It's, it, it is required under the new market tax credits to have a balanced budget and to be solvent. So we have got to work toward getting money for the CMPA to operate. Mr. So Reynolds. Oh, okay. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Parker. Yes, sir, members of City Council. I, I do want to emphasize to Council that the CMPA does not have a deficit. They're not in a deficit position. They're looking at a budget, and they're working on that budget, and there's a shortfall in this, their budget, but there's not a deficit at the CMPA at this time. There are some issues on their operating budget that we're working through, and there's some issue on the construction budget that we need to work through. But the CMPA is not, to my knowledge, in a deficit position. Good. Thank That's you. Good to know. Okay, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, I'm going to vote against the motion, and uh, and I, I appreciate it. I, I think that I I just I think I'd like to leave it in there, and I'd like to, to have Mr. Messer work on uh, language that, uh, that that's acceptable. I'd rather just have it in there um, at this time. Uh, I just think it's the best thing to do. Sometimes things change um, from uh, what we intend, and I I just don't feel comfortable now pulling it out. Uh, I'm going to vote against the motion, and I'm going to, if if, uh, if I'm successful and have others join me, then I'm going to make a motion that we allow it to stay in there with the uh, with the understanding that Mr. Messer will work on uh, language to to leave that 75 percent in there, whatever legal ease has to be put in there to satisfy our obligation for new market tax credits, et cetera. Because I, I heard uh, Mr. Gray uh, last week talk about. Um, uh, an issue that, uh, that, that we must uh, 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 operate uh, at, at least, least even uh, 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 or we uh, jeopardize our new market tax credit. So we, we use the, the new market tax credit, credits often for different things. And I'm, I'm just going to vote against this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to, uh, if, we, if I do have others vote with me, I'm just going to uh, uh, vote to allow this in or make a motion to allow it to keep this in and let Mr. Messer uh, get with uh, with the other attorneys and try to get some language that, that, that gets everybody satisfied. Thank you. Mr. Townsend. No, I'm okay. All right, Dr. Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like some clarification. I, I understand Mr. Remington's point that, you know, it has been approved by the CMPA, it's been approved by uh, Maritime Place, and, you know, if we pull it out, 
we have to go back through renegotiating. But I'm also hearing if we leave those words in and we go to sign this document tomorrow, we now have jeopardized new market tax credits. And so I'm wondering if we left this language in, would that mean that the attorneys would fix that language over the next few days and it wouldn't have to go back? You know, I guess part of the question is when the CMPA approved it, did they understand that we might tweak the language based on our new market tax credit status? Um, you know, because I mean, they're clearly maybe they really are going to be upset that they can't have hot tub facilities in, in the park as well. That's now in the contract and the CMPA didn't approve that. And so, I mean, there are a lot of tweaks in this. Do all of those have to go back to the CMPA? Or are there certain things that if we approve it tonight as is, is it with an understanding that we will fix the language before the signature on you know, and by the September 2nd deadline? Or if we approve it tonight as is, will it be automatically signed by the mayor and therefore jeopardize our credits? Thank you. Mr. Master. Well, I, again, I'm, I'm not sure what the question is. I'm not sure I know the answer. Uh, I defer to the mayor's office on that, and uh, I don't know how to better phrase it than I stand on my recommendation. Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. President. I think the important thing to recognize is, is that you have your attorney, you have your CFO, and you have the mayor's office who are weighing in on this issue, saying that you're going to put our new market tax credits at risk. Um, that's something that's extremely important to consider. We believe that there are other ways to achieve the objectives, uh, but uh, uh, I'll let Mr. Barker elaborate. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds, members of City Council. Um, the first of all, I want to say that, you know, this, this is complicated at best, I mean, with, with the new market tax credits. And um, as, I, as I say from the attorney that the city has with new market tax credits, uh, it is cleaner uh, to pull this out. I've made a commitment to do this. Dr. Pratt, you have suggested that the language be changed before it's signed. It would be my recommendation to the mayor not to sign this agreement, even if council approves the agreement, uh, unless the language is changed. So you can either pull it out or my recommendation, I'm not sure what the mayor would do, but it would be my strong recommendation to the mayor if you approve it with the language as written, unamended, that he does not sign the agreement, which means that it would not be effective if he took my, my advice. Now, if the language could be changed by the time it was signed uh, satisfactory to the new market tax credits attorney, then that's another way to, to handle it. So either way, you can pull it out. Mayor, sign, I would recommend to the mayor that he sign the agreement with it out. The other thing that could happen is what you suggested, which is the language be changed before he, he signs it if he took my recommendation. But it, it could happen either way, in, in my opinion. Thank you. Can I follow that comment? Then would it be an acceptable thing to say, um, you know, we approve it without that particular language, but we expect that the attorneys will figure out an appropriate language between now and signing that puts 75 percent. I don't know. It's, it's a complicated situation, and it might just be easier to, to pull it with the supreme promise that we will find that, that language somewhere and amend the agreement in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. And I think at this point, it's clear that we do not want to jeopardize our new market tax credits. It's been explained to us that by leaving the language in as is, it would do just that, jeopardize our new, new market tax credits. I am confident that the attorneys and those that will work on this language will be, are competent and capable in developing the language that will be acceptable to all parties. Now, this is one of those situations where we can sit here 
and beat the dead horse. But after we've been told that this language jeopardizes our new, new market tax credits, the appropriate thing to do at this point would be to pull it out, rewrite the language, and move forward. And now if it causes some people to have to work over the weekend, that's what they have to do. But we need to get down to the bare bones of clearing up the language, not jeopardizing new market tax credits, and move forward. And I'm sure if they need a couple of law books or dictionaries, they'll come up with the language that will be acceptable and appropriate. So I'm ready to move forward by pulling it out, getting it clear, and then I'll have some comments after the vote. Thank you. Mr. Townsend, last word. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I concur with uh, Councilman Gerald's. Uh, we've, uh, we've had uh, our financial uh, officer and our attorney uh, suggest to us that we really will be jeopardizing uh, the new market tax credit. And, and in good faith, I, I cannot vote for something that will in actuality make that uh, a possibility. Uh, the other concern, I know we have a certain uh, deadline uh, in September here. However, um, I, I think that this does not have any significant impact on what we have with uh, the American group is just between CMPA. Uh, the other thing I suggested, when things are submitted from CMPA, they are submitted uh, not to concur with everything that they submit up here, but they are submitted for our approval or either comments. So uh, that's what we're doing. And uh, so I, I just don't feel that um, we should uh, send this forth with the language in there, especially based on uh, the possibility of the consequences that we might, uh, we might face. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So the um, substitute motion that's now the main motion is to approve the um, lease, Mr. Weiss. I know you're on your way to clarifying this, Mr. President, and you're tired of talking. I just want to make sure, um, after all that we've talked about, we had um, asked Councilman Johnson to carry the will of this council back to this further discussion on this. Um, so I'm trying to understand in supporting this, removing it as stated, that that will happen. Is that what the motion is? No. That, that, no? that is, yes. Okay, see, we're we're all confused as far okay. as what the exact motion is. Well, I was trying to say that when you <laughs> turned your light on. The motion is, the main motion, the new main motion is to approve um, this lease, minus 6G, and that Mr. K um, um, Johnson is the designated representative for the City Council to negotiate with all concerned parties on finding a way to make that 75-25 um, split possible. That okay, so I'm just trying to understand, since we're asking him to, to do that, he's not able to support the motion, so is he still going to do that? If, does this, are we accomplishing what we had intended to? Well, I think his vote is, is would be irrelevant, whether he votes for it or against it, is that he... <laughs> not, I mean, he's our, he's our designee. I'm yeah. concerned that... We're, we're asking that's for a motion not he's not willing to motion, fulfill. But right. That's the way the motion, then I'll vote yes. <laughs> okay. Please vote. Okay. And that passes uh, six to one with. Uh, Mr. Spencer abstaining. Mr. Geralds. Thank you, Mr. President. And normally you don't hear me passing out too many flowers about things, but I want Council to know that the meeting that Mr. Johnson mentioned a little while ago, I was present at that very long meeting. And as we occasionally pass out accolades, I want to assure Council that Mr. Johnson, Council Member Johnson, in my opinion, was the pit bull negotiator at that table. He'd done one hell of a job. He brought us to where we are now. And to let you know, I have full confidence in his ability to work with them. He stood up, he took on the whole board, and we went on for hours and hours. And to get this, but with what we know now about the new market tax credits and what we have to do, I have full confidence that he will be able to go back 
with his pit bull attitude to the negotiating table and get it all worked out. So as I indicated, I was at that meeting. It was a very long meeting. And it just sort of went around and around at time. But uh, Mr. Johnson did an excellent job in representing the interests of the city and the, and the people of the city of Pensacola. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I know he'll do a great job. And I know that he supports the spirit of what that language had. And uh, I, I expect uh, good results for all, all sides on that. And I do need, I do need to apologize to, to, to Mr. Weiss. That was not part of the motion. What had happened before, as I said, unless there is some objection that he would be our designee uh, for the negotiations. And then I think Ms. Myers had spoke favorably of that, and I got the two confused. But anyway, okay, no problem. Mr. Gerald. Yeah, we'll throw him in the pit, and I'm, I'm confident that he can hold his own. Okay, Thank great. You. All right, thanks. Thank you, sir. Okay, that completes the consent agenda. Thank God for consent agendas. Things go so much more quickly. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, the uh, committee report uh, from the Committee of the Whole, these are items that did not pass unanimously um, from our committee meeting on Monday. And the first one is equal representation on boards, authorities, and commissions. Um, that City Council approved an ordinance creating Section 12-13-6 of the Code of the City of Pensacola to ensure minority, non-minority representation and balance on boards, authorities, and commissions. That motion passed four to one. Uh, Council Member Wu dissenting and Council Members um, Hall and Johnson absent for the vote. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Please vote. Ms. Myers. Oh, you want to vote? Yeah. Okay, I'll vote. Clear Ms. Lyers' slide then, please. Thank you. Okay, and that passes unanimously. The, Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. That is a significant move. I want to point out that that is a significant move for this council to put ourselves in a position to give full consideration for our boards and commissions so that we have equal and fair representation, whether it's race or gender. But it lets the citizens know that we're taking a bold step to ensure that this happens on all of our boards and commissions and authorities that will represent the city and give the, the citizens that level of participation and diversity that we talk so much about. Thank you all, Council. All right, thank, thank you. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Next item is confirmation of mayoral appointment of neighborhood services director. That city council confirmed the appointment of Marcus Brian Cooper as neighborhood services director. The motion passed five to one, council member Myers dissenting and Council Member Hall absent for the vote. Move the approval. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? Please vote. And that passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. Community Redevelopment Agency. Sir? Mr. Spencer? Yes. Community thank Redevelopment Agency. Thank you. Um, the Community Redevelopment Agency Board met um, Monday, August 20th. Action item involved the approval of the July 16th board meeting minutes. That passed unanimously, and there were only two discussion items, one being the downtown technolo technology park in a local agreement. The second, we had an update from the <coughs> RA Administrator, Ryan Winterberg Lip on the Hicksart Economic Development Agreement, uh, relevant dates and terms, and also had uh, CRA Administrator provide for us a CRA update um, on projects and activities. And that ends my report on the Community Redevelopment Agency. Thanks, sir. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. President. I'll make it quick. Uh, you know, uh, there was a discussion that, uh, that, came, that arose um, out of that CRA meeting that, uh, that I'd like to follow up on. Um, I, I, at the beginning of the meetings of the CRA, um, we have to disclose uh, uh, ownership and property. I think we have three uh, council persons that disclose that. And I, I noticed uh, uh, on the CRA uh, agenda there that we had uh, uh, two staff members um, that, uh, that are uh, 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 the contact persons for the, uh, for the CRA. And one of them um, uh, has a private law practice uh, here and is a part-time contract employee. And I'd like to make a motion that we uh, 
uh, uh, have this chief of staff, if he's going to be involved with the CRA, uh, make a disclosure also uh, in the spirit of uh, transparency and openness that we talk about so often here at City Hall. I'd like to make a motion that uh, as we move forward that he uh, discloses who he um, deals with in a private, uh, uh, with his private law practice, um, that he also deals with uh, uh, in the CRA uh, at, uh, at City Hall. So I'll make that motion uh, that we uh, that demand a disclosure from him um, and he deals with uh, privately that he also deals with publicly. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, it, it being in order or not. One is whether it's even appropriate for City Council to uh, address it, or if that uh, 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 item for the CRA itself. I'm okay. not voicing approval or disapproval. Oh, that's fine. Well, whatever. Motion. And and if we if it is in order for the City Council to address it, is that we would do it during um, new business. Okay, well that's fine, but uh, again, well how did we come about the disclosures that we have to have for uh, property ownership? However that mechanism happened, then I suggest yeah, we Yeah, 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 I, th I think that's by law. Mr. Okay. Uh, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, from this point forward, I've been appointed to be the staff member that's overseeing CRA, and I have no business interests in the CRA. However, I do work and play here. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I missed that. Yeah, it, he is the new staff contact for the CRA, Mr. Reynolds is. Boy, isn't that convenient. <laughs> okay. All right. Dr. Pratt. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I was going to clarify what the disclosure, where the disclosures came from, but I don't need to do that now. Thank Ms. you. Mr. Weiss. You can clear my light, Mr. Okay. President. Okay. All right. Thank you. And that does conclude your report, sir. Thank you. Uh, ordinances on the first reading. Item 14A is proposed ordinance number 21-12, an ordinance to be entitled, an ordinance creating section 12-13-6 of the Code of the City of Pensacola, Florida, establishing the city policy on providing for minority representation on boards, authorities, and commissions, providing for severability, repealing clause, providing an effective date. Move to approve. Second. Uh, we have a motion in order. <laughs> Sir, what do you, Mr. Johnson. I'm good. I, oh, okay. I'm just laughing at you. You look funny tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel pretty funny tonight. Okay. Please vote. Okay, that passes unanimously. Mr. Townsend is absent for the vote. Madam Clerk. Item 14B is proposed ordinance number 22-12, an ordinance to be entitled. An ordinance closing, abandoning, and vacating a portion of the I Street right of way in Pensacola, Escambia County, State of Florida, repealing clause and providing an effective date. Move to approval. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. Please vote. Okay, and that passes unanimously with uh, Mr. Johnson absent for the vote. Madam Clerk. Uh, ordinances on the second reading. There are none. Resolutions. Item 16A is resolution number 32-12, a resolution to be entitled, a resolution authorizing and making revisions and appropriations for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2012, providing for an effective date. Move to approve. Second. Motion, second. Discussion? Let's vote. Okay, that passes unanimously. And again, Mr. Johnson absent for the vote. Item 16B. Item 16B is resolution number 33-12, a resolution to be entitled, a resolution of the City of Pensacola, Florida, relating to the provision of stormwater management services provided by the City Stormwater Utility, reimposing stormwater service assessments against developed property located within the stormwater service area for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2012, approving the rate of assessment, approving the assessment role, and approving an effective date. Move the approval. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Please vote. And that passes on a vote of six to one. Mr. Johnson, absent for the vote. Is there any unfinished business? 
Ms. Myers. Yes, I want to bring up the um, government street uh, issue that uh, uh, Mr. Bear brought up earlier. And I really think that there needs to be, uh, this issue needs to be addressed tonight so that people are not just left in limbo. Um, so I, I would like to uh, make a motion to take no action as to vehicular traffic on Government Street. Second. There's a motion and a second discussion. Dr. Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I hope that um, Councilwoman, Councilwoman Myers would narrow her comments because I think that there were interests in the community about bike lanes, those might be vehicles. I, I, if you would make it more specific about East Government Street, I would feel more comfortable supporting it. Thank you. You're opening tonight. Ms. Myers. Um, I, I, I feel that the motion is, is very narrow. It only addresses vehicular traffic. That leaves open um, a, a further improvements to Government Street. And uh, I think it should be improved. I think there are a lot of uh, areas that need to be discussed in terms of uh, improving Government Street. And I just, I, I didn't want to address bike lanes or side, sidewalk reconstruction or anything other than just what is concerns the community most right now. And the issue that was originally be, before us was vehicular traffic. But it certainly doesn't preclude any other improvements. Uh, and that, that's why I made the motion this narrow, because I just wanted it to be focused on vehicular traffic and not anything else. Mr. Spencer. Um, thank you. I, I do not support Councilwoman Meyer's motion, and I, I, I completely understand why it is um, has been stated as as narrowly as it has been um, from a strategic and technical standpoint, and and respect what her goal is. Um, but I but I don't support it, and I just am. Um, I guess my convictions are as as strong about wanting to further explore this as perhaps um, other council members have shown that they have perhaps a particular um, focus and interest in, in vetting an issue to the end. And I don't mean to do this at all to the expense of, of um, citizens. I don't want uh, them to be fatigued um, which is certainly what I recognize as some rationale that is being offered um, by council members as to why they want to, to bring this level of conclusion in the form of supporting this motion. We need some order in the back of the room, please. However, um, Mr. President, I just, I have received enough communication from other members that I respect, um, including uh, Mr. Um, Matt, um, Mr. Matt um, Altier, who is heading up a very much an interesting um, endeavor and committee regarding the cultural tourism. Um, he has assured me he is meeting with um, President Judy Benz. They recognize they have not offered their opinion. Um, there is no, as I understand, the funding's not here for any sort of opening of the street of the, the level of or the integrity that of design that I would support. Um, and I want to make that perfectly clear. But I do hope that um, I can at least gain enough support to allow us to hear from some other organizations and and finally, this is probably the most volatile part of, of my commentary, but I think we're dealing with very much a perspective about what is, what is a broken street or 
if it's not broken, why are we trying to fix it? And the measurement of a broken street perhaps is what's different here. I don't measure a broken street um, as one that has traffic on it. Um, I measure a broken sidewalk as one where cars are driving on a sidewalk, where motor vehicles and, and users are in fact um, exhibiting transgressions in, in the form of putting vehicles on designated pedestrian pathways. So my, what I'm trying to say is increasing for traffic by double, if traffic is four and doubling it is eight, that does not mean that we have provided or created irreparable damage to, in fact, a street. So I have, a, 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 admittedly, a, a much broader interpretation of what is a working, safe street. And if I was someone that lived at the end of East Government that saw as the infrequent use of a street by vehicles, I'd be right up here behind the microphone, standing behind that podium, asking my council to not allow more cars to be on my street. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stuiz. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would like to again speak in support of Ms. Meyer's motion. And I also want to say how much respect I have for Councilman Spencer and your comments tonight and I'm, I'm not making it personal and obviously it's not negative so you might enjoy my comments um, but that this process was so flawed and for you to understand and see um, the will of the citizens that has come forward um, we've all talked about if this could have been presented differently of beautification and four-way stops and bike lanes and trees and underground utilities and opening it up um, and looking at traffic studies and start with that conversation instead of what it was presented as to the residents. It just was uh, shameful to be told that's what's going to happen and we're putting it out to bid. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad the citizens have had a chance to speak up and that's the beauty of representative government, you know, now in your district. Um, maybe hat in hand because of how this process has gone but you can reconnect with the folks in that district and have a conversation about what everyone wants and um, I just I have a great deal of respect for you for this process that you're trying to create thank you mr. Spencer um, I'm limited to two and so I'm, I want to use my second chance to comment and thank you councilwoman Deweese because I am the first to admit that introduction of this connectivity was absolutely flawed and um, that certainly I have to have to sort of smile and laugh at the use of your word I can reconnect with these um, <laughs> with these residents Unintended and, metaphor. And, and I certainly plan to if they will allow me to and um, ironically um, more than probably nine months ago when they can check with Gulf Power I didn't contact any of these individuals but I was out there with some, I would say, heavy hitters in Gulf Power. I asked them to meet me, um, and I began what I thought would be a very uh, informative forum and study on their part where I walked them down Government Street and particularly pointing to, specifically pointing to what I felt was aging overhead utilities infrastructure and so many unsightly um, utility services and other areas in, on East Government that I felt needed so much attention, particularly the lack of tree canopies and sidewalks. So we're more aligned than probably how it appears um, when it is uh, reported or, or viewed from afar. And I do look forward to, to helping them if they will accept my uh, participation in making a, a much better neighborhood and uh, East Government Street Corridor. Thank you. Ms. Myers. Yes, I just wanted to, to point out again that all this motion does is uh, just says that the council is not going to take any action on vehicular uh, traffic on Government Street. We're not going to take any action. That's what the, the motion says. Now, I share Mr. Spencer's passion for improving Government Street. I have, I have brought this street up to City Council long before I was on City Council. 
I, I really want to see it uh, become a beautiful uh, area down there. But it, it's inexcusable to have uh, that street in the condition, the sidewalks uh, in the condition it, it, it's in. It, it, it's appalling. And, and I believe that if somebody, and, 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 and the city has been threatened with a, a lawsuit over the condition of government street, and uh, I really want us to address that street, make it a top priority for beautification and all the things that you've suggested, Mr. Spencer. And this, this, this motion certainly doesn't preclude uh, us working toward uh, that. And also, I think it's really important that UWF ha ha have uh, some input. So, so I, I see a great future for that area down there and, uh, and a lot of stakeholders involved. But this motion doesn't preclude uh, all of the stakeholders getting together and working toward a common vision to improve that uh, that area there, down there. So anyway, I, I hope council will support the motion. Okay. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I'll make it quick again. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to support the motion, uh, respectfully not re uh, support the motion. I, I'd like this con conversation to continue. Um, I, again, I, uh, Councilwoman Myers is right. I'd like to get some input from UWF. I think they own 20-something uh, pieces of property in the area. I'd like to uh, get Gulf Power possibly involved in that with, uh, with all. Some of the residents that I've talked to about, uh, I must say the majority of them do not want connectivity to 9th Avenue, but there are some that do. And there are some that want improvements um, to that street that, uh, that I think are necessary. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, maybe a little bit longer, um, there was an issue with uh, a tree in the middle of a sidewalk and uh, um, some neighbors got uh, contacted me about that but, uh, uh, and the tree uh, remains there today. So I know there's some issues there with sidewalks uh, uh, and, and, and other issues. So I'd like to, to leave the, the, the conversation open. I'd also like to hear the mayor and the ma from the mayor himself and, and, and what he would like done with that street. Uh, I, I think uh, there was a recommendation a while back and, and uh, um, there's been several different uh, plans talked about, but I'd like to hear more. And I'm, I'm just not ready to close the conversation at this time, so I will not be voting for the motion, but that is very respectfully done. Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Myers, thank you. Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> and I don't think that this motion will close the discussions. And I believe that's been stated several times, but there comes a time, and as Mr. Johnson has indicated, there are some people in favor and some who are not. I believe that this motion will give everybody an opportunity to step back, take another look. There is a solution. It just hasn't been discovered yet. I, like the rest of you, probably have received mounds of documentation and opinions and et cetera, et cetera. But I, I believe that this motion will give us all a chance to step back for a second, take a look at what the objectives are, <coughs> what the options are, and then move forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Charles Bear is, is indicated he wants to speak. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to ask Ms. Myers um, how she sees this motion um, proceeding. Let's just say that uh, Mr. Altier after we get some restore money um, in here and UWF gets a big portion of that and he's able to help realize that grand plan that uh, he wanted for downtown Pensacola and if Government Street became part of that. I don't recall if it was or not or how far over it, 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 it went. Um, would your motion tonight preclude that from happening? No. Absolutely. Not. Even if that included opening up Government Street? I think that, could, that that can be brought back, but we're taking it off the table for right now with this motion. Okay. All right. And, well, actually, the um, way that you'd have to, to do it is somebody vote to reconsider. And, and if it was voted uh, um, down, regardless of how the vote was done, couldn't reconsider for another year after that. So. Okay, Mr. Bear. Thank you, President Hall and council members for letting me speak again. Uh, I just wanted to point out one thing about UWF. I have met with Matt Altier, and I can tell you that the type of tourist that he is seeking is not one that drives into town. 
typical uh, cultural tourist flies into town and gets transportation to downtown through a taxi, through you know whatever means they might do it, a shuttle. And then the whole idea of having ferries between the different areas, the ferry out at Fort Pickens, ferry to the beach, ferry over to the Naval Aviation Museum is for that particular type of tourist because they don't like to drive in. They typically spend more money than your average tourist that say would go to the beach. And so it's not necessarily, if you're waiting for them to weigh in on this, I don't think the type of tourist that he's trying to attract really needs Government Street to be open. What they need is a good walkable street, walkable streets throughout. And I, I'm not sure how far over it went either. I think the main corridor he was looking at was you know around Palafox and then down next to the PNJ building and somewhere in there, and I don't think that that this particular road opening it or you know would really play into the type of tourists they're trying to attract. And one other thing I wanted to mention was that in the contract that was let with um, with West Florida Regional Planning Council, there was a four thousand dollar fee for the contract consultant that was to bring in uh, I believe Mr. Burden. And it appears to me that, that this whole study was done to justify reopening Government Street. And that even though you call it com, you know, uh, reopening uh, or the, the grid um, and complete streets, there is just a real push here. We spent $18,000 and now we didn't get the result we wanted because someone wanted this result to be that we need to reopen East Government Street. And so we haven't gotten that, so we're going to continue this. And I think it's time to listen to the citizens and you've got a fairly clear mandate from the citizens. They had plenty of opportunities. Even these people that have contacted Councilman Spencer, they should have come to one of the four forums or the public hearings and made their voice be known. And I think at this point, you know, you need to look at who has weighed in on this and make your decision. I respect your decision. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mr. Gerald. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll Actually, this is your third time, so third time. Uh, I will need to... Well, a waiver of rules, okay, I'll be quiet. Perhaps we'll be out of here by 8. If there's no objection, mm -hmm. Mr. Gerald, to have an opportunity to speak the third time. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. One of the things that came to mind as I'm listening to us discuss this issue is that I lived in the city of New York for 15 years, and many of you are old enough to remember the dead-end kids the dead-end streets that were along the East River. And I'm wondering if we can all take a trip up to New York and look at what happened to those dead, what the city has done with those dead-end streets. Because government, in and, and its present condition, runs into a, a dead-end. But there are creative ways that you can develop a dead-end street that will fit in with the aesthetics of the city itself. Can you guys approve a, a trip? to New York so we can go take a look at the dead end streets and the changes that have been made and how they look, you know, positive. Because I think our, our thinking may be limited uh, to more of a personal option and a plan. But if we had um, a trip, we could go up and take a look and see that all of those dead end streets along the East River have been creatively reconstructed to fit in with the aesthetics of the city of New York. We get a motion to approve a trip. As long as we can do it during the U.S. Open, there. So, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Townsend. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I wasn't going to say anything on this issue, uh, but I don't know how many of you recall when Governor Street was open. I don't know whether any of you remember that. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I really didn't see anything wrong with it. My opinion, uh, it was a thoroughfare uh, that was needed, uh, and in my opinion, it is possibly a, a thoroughfare that might be need to be brought back. I um, I haven't heard any real compelling reasons uh, as to why we should not open it back up. I know a lot of citizens would like to have their own little private sanctuary down there, but like to have some private sanctuary or somewhere other parts of the city. But uh, I'm in favor of having full of dialogue. It can be made beautiful with bike pairs, all the other things, with the street. Uh, but to close it off, I uh, just have some real concerns about that. Thank you. Mr. Weiss. 
Thank you, Mr. President. And I really did not want to speak twice, but I, I, um, I respect everyone's position here tonight. I just urge Council to consider the um, spirit in which Ms. Myers has respectfully made this motion. And we all know that this conversation is going to continue, that UWF has some opportunities. What we're trying to accomplish here, and in the spirit of that, a unanimous vote to end this broken and very frustrating conversation that exists. And because of how it was started and how it was crammed down the citizen's throat and how they were put through the four um, workshops and the outcome is absolutely no, a majority says no. So what we're doing is symbolically um, with, with Ms. Meyer's motion, ending that conversation, it can be brought back up. It can be forged in a new way. I mean, I hate to make a metaphor of it, but it's as if there's a broken arm that needs to be set and put in a cast and heal. Um, I think this went terribly poorly. And in the spirit of what she's trying to accomplish, unanimously supporting that tonight sends that message that we respect representative government and we hear you citizens. We, we have heard the will of the people that they do not want this at this time. And that's what is being accomplished here tonight. Thank you. Dr. Pratt. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to respond briefly to Councilman Townsend's comments. I, um, I have 87,000 reasons not to reopen Government Street. It, that's how much that original proposal was going to cost. And I think we as a city can find better uses of the taxpayer dollars than to do something that the majority of citizens that we've heard from said that they don't want us to do. There could be compelling reasons to do it. I just haven't seen them. And if I, in absence of a compelling reason, I don't need to spend that kind of money on a project where there are a lot of other projects that I think, you know, I've heard from citizens, I'd like to have this, I'd like to have that, and we could spend that money elsewhere for things that, that neighborhoods want. And um, I'm not precluding it coming back if there's a great, plan that that really works I, it could work but um, at this point I, I will support the motion I, I do think that that the motion is a little broad everybody says it's narrow but government street is 20 30 blocks long and so I think there there's an opportunity for for other things to come up but um, I appreciate the spirit of the motion and I will support it thank you Okay, uh, I'm, I'm looking out for you here, Mr. Spencer. I'm going to call on Ms. Dubasan to speak first, just in case you want to address some of her remarks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't know why you would think he would want to respond after I speak, Mr. Hall. <laughs> um, Council, and especially you, Mr. Hall, I, I rise this evening because I unfortunately was unable to attend the complete street, uh, I mean, excuse me, the opening the grid meetings because they were scheduled at the same time that City Council meetings were scheduled, which left some people with an inability to give input. Um, but since I don't live in that neighborhood, it's not nearly as impactful. However, there are some questions that I believe um, went unanswered that in the future would give plenty of reason for council to look at it again. But in, in this moment, I would encourage you to consider Ms. Meyer's um, proposal because the value of homes is directly impacted by the climate of confidence that a neighborhood has to present to the public. We've been spending many, many weeks and days um, working on the urban renewal, trying to figure out how we create a climate of confidence in all of our neighborhoods that are emerging. That neighborhood is not one that is in danger. People believe in the value of their homes there. Many people have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars those who are capable, and there are also others who have simple homes who have done the work that they need to to preserve their homes in that area. And when you change a cul-de-sac type street, you directly negatively impact the houses on that street so that you are directly negatively impacting your tax roll. So while we're trying to change rules on one side of the city to raise the tax rolls, we're going to change rules on the other side of the city to lower the tax rolls. And if you really want to do what the people want, you get a consensus, which is what that series of charrettes and follow-up meetings and everything you know, gave you, a consensus of all interested parties, all of whom were duly publicly notified of the opportunity to participate. I took the time to call Mr. Altier 
for the first meeting because I felt it was very important that UWF weigh in early on because he had laid out a program of walkability and heritage tourism. I spoke with Carter Kina, who had done a model layout of what UWF could do and what other things could be done in that area. Both of them at that point indicated that they could make it work either way. Mr. Kina even said that you know he had purposely left the Ninth Avenue out of his little model because it was anything that happens, we just adjust everything inside. So what, what, what Ms. Myers is proposing tonight would give those homeowners who are concerned that they have to watch every single meeting of this city for the next six, eight, ten months until suddenly it's back up as a, a hot item. If you put it to rest, then it would have to come up, initiate it again, and you would have a process that the, the citizens could connect with. So I would encourage you to look at the process that you are reversing if you don't settle this issue. You are just prolonging something that you've gone through over and over and over now, because this is actually the second time that this topic has come before this body. The first time when it didn't get approved, it was sent to this whole consensus building process. So please look at what you're doing to the individuals and the properties therein attached. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Sansing. Okay, Sansing, 1517 East Jackson. Thank you. You know, that's part of Hawkshaw. I don't know if anyone up there even knows what I'm talking about. But I probably walked up and down Ninth Avenue all in that neighborhood more than any of you. And luckily, there's a lot of historic buildings down there. Now, I can see certain people want to get in there, develop it. At times, I've even thought about moving back down in that area. But I'm happy where I'm at. But I'd love it down there. It, it's, it's a wonderful neighborhood. I've even, I miss Michael's, that French restaurant. I'd go out of my way to go back there and visit it. it again, it's citizens in the neighborhood. I'm not for gated communities, and this ain't a gated community. I swing in there all the time. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can keep it closed. You can make it pedestrian friendly. You can put in bike paths. You can do all kind of things, but if the citizens of that neighborhood wishes to keep it closed, can you possibly, I mean, I'm sure most of, well, I don't know, at one time, I thought about it, and I'm thinking, oh my God, UWF, they got a monopoly on there. They can almost assert their power and get practically anything they want. Now you got citizens that's just angry as hell, and they ain't gonna take it anymore. And this is an issue where you can say, hey, citizens have a right. Let me interject something. I'm a little upset. Now, I'm a little out of line. I got a few minutes to explain why I'm a little upset. I came down here, I was late. But I was listening to it as I was running around the house. I heard about dolphins. Larry, I heard this, you know. I heard some other good things. And I come down here, trying to get into a parking spot the old military term, you know, give it a quick, a quick visual. Hell, they in the damn parking place around the city hall. You try and drive into handicap, you can't yeah. even get in. Gary, so why am I upset? That's save, why. Many save, things. Yeah, save that for open forum. Um, no, I just wanted to get that off my chest. I'll go have a cigarette. All right. Okay, sir. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Thank you, and I recognize you. Close handicap parking. Thanks, sir. All right, I recognize that you're granting me a, um, a uh, Yes, if there's no objection from counsel, I'll give you the third time to speak. Thank okay, you. thanks. First of all, um, I think that Ms. Dottie Dubasson is a very much a, a, an important asset and a voice for our community, and not only that, she consistently reminds me that I, I need to hone my debating skills, and um, I, I, I appreciate the fact that 
the terms and the justifications often for her uh, opinions are, are certainly provide for me a um, help helps expand my understanding of a wider spectrum of, of where others may be coming from and I, I, I mean that sincerely um, I'm not the best debater by the way in my household um, also I want to I, this is the most important point I want to make and I, I want to reframe that perhaps councilwoman um, Deweese, uh, using that metaphor of a broken arm that needs to be set and put in a cast, I appreciate that. What I don't want to be um, cast as by not supporting the motion as and, and th therefore not being part of a unanimous vote as someone that is not pledging tonight to maintain a very much an open mind and, and want to be part of a leader in the dialogue of continuing to address East Government Street. And I, I just want to make that point. If, if I'm not on the prevailing or uh, the unanimous side, it in no way means that I am committed to pushing the plan as was presented of reconnecting East Government Street. I do not support that plan um, at all. Um, and then finally, we're, I, I think the, the money that was spent, uh, Mr. Bear was questioning that. You know, I, we've spent a lot of money on studies. I'll tell you, this particular study united, galvanized, like-minded individuals that showed an, um, an immense amount of care and concern about their neighborhood, and I just don't think that's going to die. Um, I think I think that's been fueled and it will it will continue so um, I just um, want to say finally what I saw yes there is a, an area an end of a street where people are certainly enjoying the the quiet aspect of a an almost carless or a, a low low vehicle count street and I, what I saw um, is and I just I can't resist I guess is when I see a renovation project I want to get engaged and in my mind that was a renovation project waiting to be repaired and um, that's uh, that's all I have to say okay um, I'll just be very brief in my remarks over the last six years there's a number of different things we've done in the city, specifically the downtown urban core, implementing with different urban uh, planners, experts in their, their field have um, come in to tell us that was wrong with how our downtown was. Whether it be one-way streets, you know, with uh, the corresponding signs that says do not enter, you know, wrong way, you know, the psychological barriers that uh, um, that created. And in every one of them that we've addressed, the three councils I've been part of have, have adopted those. And uh, under different forms of government too, um, managerial form of government and mayoral form of government, or mayor council form of government. And uh, um, one of the things that I heard repeatedly is one of the worst things that we did ever was back there at, at the government uh, street. I sympathize with, with the citizens, but I, I just question that, you know, we, we've taken these experts' advice on everything else, and why are we, you know, closing the door on this one? Um, I, I'm not the best vote counter in the world, but I know this is going to, to, to go uh, the opposite way that I'm going to vote, most likely, and I, I could be devious and vote with uh, what I presume the majority is going to be so that I could bring it up to be reconsidered at a, at a, at a later date. Um, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I, but I do, just do want to point out that the urban planners, not just one, but several, have said this is essential uh, to revitalizing that historic area. Please vote. One, two, three, four. Okay, that fails on a four to four vote. Okay. Any more unfinished business? 
Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I appreciate your letter that you got out, uh, uh, President Hall, about the Restore Act. Uh, I know that the county commissioners met today about that, and uh, from what I understand and what I've read, that they're uh, looking for a city council representative to uh, to be on that uh, committee that they're forming. Is is does anyone have any? Do you have an update on anyone here? Have an update on that at all? Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm ready to nominate a city council person to sit on that uh, that committee. But uh, maybe uh, by the time we have another meeting, we'll have more information on that. If I could request that. Sure. And uh, um, would you follow up as our representative, uh, Mr. Reynolds, on that, please? Yes, sir. I, I will okay. see what the county's decision is, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, if the, if the county's going to want a city council person to sit on that, I think that we should be ready for that person to just join in immediately, not for them to wait on us to have to, to go through the motions. Well, when we get to new business, just go ahead and make a nomination. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Myers. Um, you can turn my light on. Mr. Spencer. Thanks. I hope that I'm um, right to place this under or, or to speak in unfinished business. There is one item in, internally that it's been discussed, um, but then it was just mentioned with all of us, and that was I requested um, that I think through Mr. Reynolds that we um, work on a system that allowed for us as individual council members to have um, a, a way to be immediately informed of code violations for um, any sort of buildings, properties within our districts so that we could be informed um, so that when we receive phone calls from those property owners and building owners that we're prepared and we understand um, it was discussed that that sort of technology was available. It was just a question of implementing it and again, District 6, I consistently see has a high majority, I mean, or a high number of mm -hmm. code violations. So um, that's just one item. And then number two, I recall that we um, discussed having, uh, we wanted our citizens and, and uh, Ms. Councilwoman Myers, her comment about the Environmental Advisory Board is what made me remember this. And uh, we wanted to sit. We wanted citizens to be able to sign up for, let's call them e-alerts. Um, basically, if they had certain committee or special interests, that we wanted them to be able to sign up, submit their email addresses, and maybe that's in place, so that they are updated on any of those specific or respective items. And maybe Mr. Reynolds can comment on. Yeah, and I, I think it'd be an easy fix for uh, for all council members who wanted that. Uh, the GIS system, GIS system is a pretty powerful tool. So if you've got an address associated with something, District 6 representative, and if the two at large um, uh, council members wanted it, they would get everyone citywide. But uh, I think GIS would generate that pretty, pretty easily. Mr. Rounds, do you have any comments to it? No, sir. Okay. All right. Any more unfinished business? New business. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, I just, uh, before I relinquish the floor, I, I wanted to, uh, uh, I'm sure that everybody's watching the storm. Um, it's come, possibly coming our way. I was just, uh, I want to, uh, uh, was hoping that uh, maybe the mayor's office would uh, uh, offer uh, if uh, whatever uh, uh, way we're preparing. I'm sure that they're watching it very closely and I'd like to just get a real quick uh, from the mayor's office if I could and then I have a couple other issues. Thank you. Mr. Okay, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and uh, thank you, Councilman Johnson. I actually have been uh, assuming that information to staff as we've been here tonight. Uh, my latest was uh, forwarding uh, the latest update. Um, essentially, as it looks now, uh, the EOC, obviously, the Escambia County uh, EOC is, is, is obviously closely following it. it does, they're not anticipating actually activating the EOC at this point. It looks like if it does come here, it'll be a tropical storm. But we are following it uh, tomorrow morning, actually. We're having a meeting uh, with city staff. We're, we're certainly not taking this 
uh, for granted because we do know the unpredictability of these storms and so uh, there will be more uh, information to follow and I will forward this to you tonight everybody the what I've given to staff tonight as well and uh, and certainly have updates uh, tomorrow afternoon as well after our meeting or internal meetings yeah thank you very much mr. Reynolds and I just want to reassure our citizens that uh, the mayor's office the city council is aware of that storm and uh, will be prepared um, the second thing I'd like to do tonight is again I'm, I'm kind of getting uh, information loosely uh, through different uh, 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 media etc about the uh, the meeting today uh, I see uh, mr. Monroe in the audience he might know more but uh, I understand that there's uh, there could be uh, an issue with the restore act funds that uh, the City Council be asked to bring a representative forward to uh, represent the City Council in the city of Pensacola on that restore act committee and I'd like to make a motion that uh, Councilwoman Morin DeWeese represent the City Council for that uh, particular committee uh, if that is so requested by the County Commission Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Myers. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ms. DeWeese would get to speak but before before you would. I'm sorry. My light was on for something separate. Oh, okay, okay. Ms. Myers. Yes, I, I, I support uh, the motion. I think uh, Councilwoman DeWeese would do an excellent job. And thank you for, for uh, making the motion. Okay, well, thanks. Any more comments well, just I just feel like we should be proactive and be ready if that committee mm -hmm. gets put together that uh, we're ready to go and move forward okay well, good well please vote then and that passes unanimously I'm assuming you would be willing to serve mr. Weiss yes okay okay yeah okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. What? I'm sorry <laughs> you, <laughs> never, <laughs> never mind in my ear. never <laughs> never <laughs> never mind yes Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Is that all, Mr. Johnson? Uh, I better stop there. Thank you. Okay. All right. Ms. Doyle. Thank you, Mr. President. And I just wanted to take a step back and uh, welcome Mr. Reynolds to the jungle here as far as hurricanes go. I'm glad we have a briefing. Um, I don't know if everyone recalls. I think it was Opal that we went to sleep one night with a Category 1 um, and woke up the next morning and it was a Cat 5 coming straight at us. So hold on. And uh, welcome to this region, and uh, I look forward to our next briefing <laughs> that could quite possibly change. Mm -hmm. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, thank you, uh, Council President. I'll just let uh, everyone know that I actually have experience with two typhoons <laughs> in the Pacific region where I was uh, actually in charge of a major Marine Corps facility, and so I, I, I understand. All right. And my other um, concern was uh, this long discussion we had tonight and the vote that failed um, about the Government Street discussion. And um, uh, it's a concern about property ownership on Government Street. Um, it was asked during the meeting on Monday, um, I don't own property, I rent space um, on Government Street. So I haven't spoken with the owner of the building and expressed any of my thoughts or feelings on that. But um, if we would, as council members, have to disclose ownership and abstain, I'd like to, before we keep going down the road on this, um, have a determination on that. If there's any council members that actually own property and if we need to address that with Mr. Besser. Mr. Spencer. Um, certainly, and I appreciate the spirit of, of that. The, the, the almost humorous part of that is one might question, well, is Mr. Spencer voting to devalue his property or to enhance the property, uh, the, the value? I'm, I'm hearing a lot of opposition because it's going to devalue their, their property and just thought I might offer that commentary. But the, the spirit of that, of what you're requesting, um, all humor aside, as, as I understand, and I am, certainly will defer to the uh, opinion of okay. that, as, uh, including renting, renting or owning. Right. Yeah. I think any clarification would need to be. Mr. Messer, you prepared to comment on that tonight? You know, I'll, I'll take that under advisement and get back to you real soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does that take care of you, Ms. Deweese? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm any more new sorry. business? Okay, open forum. Do we have any cards for open forum? Okay. Mr. Gary Sansing. Mr. Gary Sansing. He's left the room. Mr. Sansing has left the room. Anyone else wish to speak during open forum? We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>